And once again, a huge shout out to all of our supporters, starting with our supporters over at patreon.com forward slash 878 Survivor FM. All of our $5 supporters, our editors, our $10 supporters, our production managers, Dick Donovan, Big Dog, Shane Murphy, Tank Dazza, Michael, Hawks Hammer, and Nikin. Our producers, our $25 supporters, Jake Snow, Red Freedom, Melbourne, and Tuxness. And our director, our $50 supporter, a very generous Wolves with Day Z or Sour Crowd. And I'd also like to shout out all of our YouTube members, Kenny Baker, Mr. Fix, Cinnamon, King Alobar, Foxy Pote, and Tuxness. All of you are legends who help the show go on each and every week. Thank you for all of your support, even just by watching or listening each week to the podcast. And we hope you enjoy this week's show. And also a huge shout out to all of the team behind the show who help it come forward to you every week, starting with Marks, That Lad, Archie Stormcloud, Foxy Pope, Don Sibley Games, Dancer Jesus, Jacob Mango, the one, and Spud from the Daisy Down Under service. All links are in the description of the video. Please check them out. And we are live in five, four, three, two, one. And welcome to episode 84 of the Daisy podcast. Um, Lad uh, is still having dindins, so he will be joining us shortly. But as always, we have Marks here. How you doing, mate? Yeah, not too bad at all. Just found the AUG in game, so I am more than happy right now. Three days of um, back-breaking searching, you were saying, mate? Yeah, yeah. Three days of it. Finally got it, so happy now. Awesome, awesome. Um. And we are joined by the one, the only, Dimitri. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. What about you? Not too bad. I'm just... Just uh, say something again. Yep. Hello. Uh, you're good. It's working. I was just making sure uh, the audio was coming through. Um, I'm renowned for uh, screwing up which buttons I press at the start of a show <laughs> and not having um, the audio coming through from everyone. Mate, uh, good to finally have you on the show. Yeah. I mean, it's been a while in watching you guys so i'm happy to be here now on the other side of the screen <laughs> good to have you <laughs> it is mate um and, and you're, you're taking the punt and you're doing the webcam and everything have you ever done a face reveal before or uh, not in particularly no no okay but, uh, i mean i mean you are showing it so i mean i mean my community should see my face at some point <laughs> so that's the, the occasion and, and it's quite a handsome face as well mate <laughs> yeah, thank you. I mean, they they need to see the face of a mother. We are like you guys. We're yes. not special. We, you know. so yeah. Anyway, so mate, I want I want to start off with it straight away. Um, one of the one of the um things that Daisy's copped a lot of shit about is stealing your toxic zone mod. Now I know you uh, you've tweeted out publicly about this, but I want to give you a chance to state on the record. What did you think when they released the Toxic Zone? Well, the first feeling I, w- I had when they released it, I was a bit pissed. Because I was like, man, you are putting my Toxic Zone in the game. It's like, do you have your own ideas? But that was like, I was a bit, uh, I was not uh, on the eat, like I say. Sorry for my English, I'm trying to find my words sometimes. But uh, yeah, I was a bit uh, annoyed at first and angry because... That's like my old work. That's what represents my, uh, my, my trace in Daisy. That's what makes me like modding and continue my work mm-hmm. on the Daisy community. But then I, I saw what they did and I see it in another aspect. I mean, what's the most common way to be happy about something? It's they flatter me. They made a copy of something I made. So it's flattering for me. So I'm more like mm. this. Uh, toxic zone they made, it's like what I always wanted for the game. Something that is difficult, something that makes the game really interesting in some military area where it's difficult to go 
where there is danger, that's always something I wanted for the game, and I'm really happy that now everyone can have it because the doc, the player uh, on the Xbox, on the PlayStation, they were not able to use Toxic Zone. Now yeah. they can, and I'm very happy they can. So yep. at the end, I'm more happy than angry. So what was the inspiration and, for your mod? Uh, for my mod, uh, I played a bit on Next Day, which uh, kind of had a small toxic area that were moving in some places the, on the map. So that's uh, another kind of survival game, uh, a bit like Daisy, but more rusky with uh, not a lot of player based community, but still was a bit funny. There were a couple of bots, a couple of uh, uh, cars, stuff like that. And they had those green areas at some point where you had uh, NBC wear and stuff. And I decided to bring it to Daisy. So the idea itself is not really mine, yep. but I improved, uh, improved it in Daisy. I made it better. But the first part was particles. Particles were really uh, a problem when I started making the, the toxic zone. Because I don't know if you've seen, but when you have m multiple particles in the same area, uh, multiple, I don't know, grenade, uh, flash, flash, not flash grenade, but smoke grenades, they may glitch a bit. And that's a Daisy core issue. I don't know if that's going to be fixed or if it's fixed right now. I think it is because they managed to make the toxic zone themselves. But uh, yeah, the core game itself was a bit uh, not that easy for making toxic zone. And I had to play a bit with it. And that's why it was a bit tricky to configure for the players. But at the end, it still managed to get to 600,000 users. So I guess wow. it's pretty good, uh, pretty good stuff. And I'm happy about it. <clears throat> Did they reach out to you before um, anything? Nope. No, no, nothing at all. I, would, I mean, that's the that's the thing where I'm angry about. I mean, I don't mind you making it, but just credit me. Just even if that's not uh, if, even if you had the idea before. I mean, I, I represent the guy that made Toxic Gun alive for as long modding lived almost. Mm. Now they made it. The, that's the only thing I'm a bit annoyed about it is the developer could have at least just traded me a bit, even if that's not the what, if, even if they're not inspired the, from my work, that could be a good thing for me, a way mm. out if I wanted to live. But I mean, I won't stay uh, on that. I'm above it. I, I will say, uh, you know, and, and we love the dev team here, but that's a bit ordinary. Um, yeah, you know, even just some professional courtesy to just hey heads up, um, we're going to be actually adding because like I, I remember from back in the very early days, you know they talked about a toxic zone up in Tizzy, um, yeah, back you know years ago, eight nine years ago. Um, so it's definitely mm. something that they always had uh, going. But yeah, you know, I, 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 Marks, what do you think on that? Yeah, I, rem I remember hearing about the Toxic Zone. Uh, remember, there were the concept art was teased for Tizzy and stuff. Um, yeah, it would have been nice if they uh, did credit or at least leave you know that hey, look, this is coming in the current update. Just be be aware. Um, I don't know how how much help it would have done, um, but at least you know you would have been aware, so you could have either warned maybe other server owners or something yeah. that it was going to happen. Um, but uh, yeah, well, Daisy's not very known for uh, you know giving heads up. Really, yeah. are they? They usually just they usually just drop stuff on us without without telling us. Yeah, that's how they work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's not the only mod you've got, mate. What's your other uh, really successful mod? Uh, the second one I made that got pretty successful was the Rad Zone mod. I mean, yep. it's pretty similar in the in the aspect. But well, first of all, when I did the Toxic Zone, I always wanted to make a Rad Zone mod. Because the origin originally the first one I released was Dead Zone. And that was some kind of a radiation zone, really, really uh, crappy at the time because that's the first mod I released. And I really started modding by coding on Daisy. So I improved mm. it over time. And I managed at some point after Toxic Zone to release that rad zone. That is more like uh, interesting because the radiation stay on your clothes, stay on your weapons when you go into an area. So basically, if you want to leave without uh, dying after that by interacting with your clothes, interacting with your weapons, you have to decontaminate yourself. And I'm, I asked Morty to make me a shower, to modeling a shower, so people could use a portable to decontaminate the suits 
the weapons and every tools they were wearing when they were in the radiation area. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the core aspects of that, uh, of that mod, the ability to go to an area, having radiation on themselves, having radiation in blood, and having radiation in the air. So three types of radiation. But at the end, it was a complex system and really interesting. And a bit later, actually, I released that nuke mission. So now we have nukes in Daisy, and maybe a couple of you or saw a couple of videos about nukes in Daisy. I but, uh, made a video on one, I think. Um, I don't know if it was your nuke, uh, but there was a server that was running nukes, and they yeah. had on a server. It was pretty insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I improved it over time. I think the last uh, there is a video I think on the on the on the page. Uh, the last one, and that's like the final version I made, which is really nice to see. A bit uh, laggy because I man I tried to destroy trees in a eight me eight hundred meters radius, which is quite a lot. <laughs> but uh, I reduced that a lot for the working version. But right now we have uh, a server, I think, which is uh, if I remember correctly, that's one of the Mortis uh, server. I don't remember the name, but they use it on Pakistan and they have really good laugh about it. People are, yeah, the Gravy Gang, if you guys uh, have heard of the Gravy Gang server. They have a Pakistan servers where they use the nuke. Uh, in the desert land, it's really, really beautiful to see. When you see it just drop on the city, just blow up and people running, yeah. trying to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really yeah, exciting. We... We, we we were in a helicopter when one went off and we saw it from the sky and it was even cooler. Yeah, yeah I still have to improve it a bit. All right. Just watching the uh, video that you got on your uh, Red Zone mod. Oh, yeah, that's the, that's the shower. Quite old one because the animation is still a bit broken. But all right, let's see. No, only that's how the shower works. So you have to fill it with a tank full of water. And then when it's filled, I'm think I'm I think I'm dropping the gasoline for right now from the yeah, and filling water in it. Yeah, because the shower doesn't work with fuel, obviously. So mm, you have yeah. to fill it with water in order to decontaminate the suit. And welcome back, lad. Hello, oh. thank you. Yeah, and here it is. And then you just go inside. <laughs> that's really cool. And that's, no, yeah, I'm going to test it with that uh, piece of tool, which is a giga counter for checking radiation quantity on clothes. And you can make sure that there is no more radiation in your clothes. So it's all of mm -hmm. the item you're wearing, and including the weapons and the tool slot. So basically, everything that you pick up won't get radiation points for performance issue reason because you won't be able to know which item have radiation, and at some point it could be just messy for the to have items, random items that have radiation points. So That's actually a really, really uh, clever mod, mate. Um, I've, I've been on a um, server that I think has it, um, but I never actually made it into the zone, so I'm glad I'm actually watching that because, like Mark said, that's pretty fucking cool. I'm assuming sure, um, uh, there is another. Uh, that's the main mod, but there is the new mission one. Check it; must be on another page. And we have the. I think it's on the second page. Uh, the new mission. Yeah, check that. Check that one. And we have a, the first. Check that one. It's pretty, uh, it's the one that I talk about with the eight killing trees radius. So a bit laggy, but still great to see. I love this video so much. Oh yeah, look at the job. I had a, a sound engineer for making the nuke sound and it's pretty amazing now. So that's the laggy part. That's what I'm saying. 800 wow. meters killing trees radius. That's just too much for Daisy, so I, I changed that to only 200 meters. And now and it's does that, perfect. Does that kill players or damage players, or does it just put them in a, like a toxic zone? 
No, no, no. It kills player in uh, the center. So from zero to two hundred or three hundred meters, it killed them instantly. And right. between wow. three hundred and six hundred meters, you almost die. You only have ten health points, and you fall unconscious. And when you woke up, oh. you almost dead. And then yeah. if you go a bit more, normally you just get a couple of damage, but still like. So if you're like a kilometer away, you can see the explosion and you won't take any effect and that's pretty much the best way to see it without dying. I actually <laughs> like that it knocked over all the trees. Yeah, that's a cool feature. And that's not all about it. That in the video you only see the radiation, the, the nuclear explosion itself, but after that we have nuke waste that pop all over the area and players need to go with a pickaxe to clean them. And once they clean all the smoky uh, nuke waste of the area, the area is cleared from radiation and they get a random chest that spawned in the city as reward. That's pretty cool, so it actually gives you something to... Yeah, that's the, that's the nuke waste you can see on, in the city. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty... That's, that's the creator. I'm, I'm stunned. <laughs> Again, yeah, the, the, the sort of stuff that's being done in the background, and that's yeah, I mean, I, I, post a, I post a few videos of it, and I know I Discord and most of the people that use it, I see them a lot because I'm quite uh, active on my Discord. I always try to help people. Uh, so, yeah, well, I always have people asking me to help for config setup, for how it works, how to improve it and stuff. So I don't really see the people that don't use it, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's still, I think it could still be uh, shown a bit more because it has good potential. And a nuke mm. in Daisy, it's something really interesting to have, I think. It's not something, uh, it's a big thing. I mean, when I say I want to make a nuke in, a nuke in Daisy, can you imagine that? Mm. So yeah. Try it once if you can, if you have the chance. I don't know. I've have still yet to try it because I remember, I remember yourself, Kaf, and I were talking about it. I think at yeah. one point, and you were showing us yeah. videos about it, and I was like, "Fucking gobsmacked!" <laughs> yeah, we I wanted guess. to make uh, some kind of event with Kaf on one of his uh, XK map, where basically players had to uh, avoid a nuke launch. Uh, so some kind of ba uh, bunkers where you had a control panel. Once the nuke, um, once the nuke will launch will be set up in the control panel, uh, some kind of notification will be sent to all the map players to gather to avoid the launch with some kind of countdown. And there will be two team, one team that want to launch, be able to protect inside a bunker. The other will try to avoid it. That was some kind of idea we had with CAF. Still not yeah, I remember. done, but. The idea would be amazing, just as that an event. Sounds crazy. What does yeah. it, what does it do it's to bases? Kind of like... I'm sorry. What does it do to a base if someone has a base set up, say in that city where the nuke goes off? Uh, it, it won't destroy base to for performance issue. I only destroy. I only check for players. I only uh, check for trees. Yeah. But uh, I mean, for realism, I would like to change completely the the aspect of the map. I would like to change to destroy the buildings, to make fires everywhere. But it's Daisy, and the engine is not that great yeah. when it comes to changing buildings, making fire everywhere. But that's really something I really dream about: making the the map modelable so we can make it as we want it to be dynamically. Yeah, yeah it's like like you, my side said, definitely some Fallout uh, vibes from that. <laughs> yeah. Is that the that nuke mod? Is that the only nuke mod on the Steam Workshop? I think so. I, mean, I have a couple of players always asking for having it, but I don't want to give it. So the only way to have it is to have that mod. Let me check the video that I done with that mod. I'm, I'm probably certain it was your one. I know certain I footage of like being above it. Yeah, I think, I think the guy was named Operator. And yeah, I think that's what yeah. was on his server. Mm. Yeah, I think that was actually the, the thing. Let me see if I can find it. That was version two, yeah. which is which was nice, but uh, new one is even better. I always think my work crappy at some point when I just go back to it. Yeah. Like old okay. programmer, I suppose. Yeah. 
<laughs> if you go to, if if you want to look at this, it's two minutes ten seconds into this video. I'll put it in the Twitch chat for you. Uh, we fly a helicopter, a little bird, up into the sky. And the next minute, we just get hit with this nuke out of absolutely nowhere. And it, I wasn't expecting it. I didn't realize they were on the surface. So it gave me a bit of a shock. And it went off, and we were like flying, and it flung the helicopter back. I what did you say? Seconds, I was about two minutes ten seconds. Yeah, about there. What the fuck is that? Oh my god. Is that a nuke? A nuke just went off. It was dropped on the mask. It was that uh, how it just happened? Yeah, the, the config I made in the mosque is really great because uh, it's uh, dropped on a big city and mm, from yeah. the, the trading station I made in the mosque later when you were on the top, the antenna look from away, just dropping in the city. It was just freaking amazing. Yeah. I ended up flying into this and actually getting sick from the radiation there because I didn't know what it was. So we literally yeah. flew straight into the center of it. Which ends up being a bad idea. Yeah, the yeah, um, radiation is increasing over a radius. So when you reach the center, it's like fucking heavy. Um, yeah. And for some reason, you have the new place that are over there, which is sure wrong. Probably because the owner didn't set it up correctly. Ah, but yeah. I see. Yeah, that's the problem when you make something great. You need, uh, you still need players to, several owners, I mean, to configure it correctly. Yeah. That's maybe on me also. I make always complex mod with GSONs, a lot of files, a lot of values. It must be more user friendly, probably. That would have been <laughs> cool. Um, not knowing what you were flying into that, uh, and knowing it was a thing, yeah. that would have been very, very cool. Mm -hmm. It definitely was. Yeah, it was a cool experience. And Dimitri, you've also got a uh, traders mod. Yeah, I'm, I got a trader. Yeah, I'll let you. All right, let's watch this one. It's funny. <laughs> oh, copyright music. Yeah, too bad. So fucking great with the <laughs> the video. Okay. There's some damn good trader mods on the market at the moment, isn't there, lad? No. Uh this this i mean if you want something simple then obviously the normal trader but trader plus and the, ex <laughs> the <f> <laughs> 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 and uh what expansion has are really really good really good competitors uh with like the trading kind of mods and they both serve different purposes i mean yeah you could argue oh yeah they're just both traders but both are done in both unique ways and um because XDK, we, we we use Trader Plus, and we gave Dimitri a lot of feedback in terms of it, and he's been, I mean, you've been working closely with us about it. Yeah, so, really, really enjoy it, because you are, like, the most uh, biggest, uh, how can I call that? Uh, because of you, I have a lot of feedbacks, like you say, and I can mm -hmm. really work on it and see what needs to be done, and the mod yeah. What do you think of the uh, talking NPC mod? Is that something you're going to look at incorporating into this? Oh, it's it is already. Uh, I spoke with the Enter about it, and uh, we made sure it was compatible. And yeah, I'm really happy that he made this mod. And I saw the couple of videos he did. Really, really amazing. And I really can't wait to have servers using Trader Plus and the uh, talking NPCs linked to them because that's like something that will really make the experience much, much more immersive yep definitely and yeah to talk to talk a bit about the the this trader plus i i had the trader here because i was I, I was not really happy about the the current trader we had i was not happy about the stock that was infinite i was not really happy about the uh, not getting money or just uh, losing equipment not getting the bullets when you sell a map bullet uh, losing them so i decided to make a trader more fitable to my perspective my opinion and 
what I wanted in days is a trailer that doesn't kill the economy, which basically is um, an addition to it. So it uh, allow players to go to the trader as a point to share stuff and then they have to go back in land to gather stuff in order to trade again. Yep. That's the main idea of Trader Plus. You go in land, you find stuff, you sell it to the trader and with that, then you can buy it at the trader. The only mm -hmm. stock that you can have at the base idea, because now it's not more the case, you can still have it. But the base idea is that you can only buy what other people sell to the trader. Mm -hmm. And that's how you make a good trader because it's player-based economy. It's not everything you can have, so your economy is broken because players keep buying the same weapons all over. That's not something you should have in Daisy. I played enough servers with that kind of gameplay, and at the end it's just boring because you, you, cannot, uh, you cannot enjoy playing with a simple SKS and that particular weapons. Everyone is playing with their high-level gun, buying yeah. all over again. Yeah, and I'm running out of 50 cals or something. Yeah, that's, uh, that was the main idea with the trader. Then I made it uh, my own bank system. And it will help players to get rid of a couple of mods. So having some kind of punch pack. I made a car lock system because in order to buy cars, uh, I needed a way to say to keep them safe. So we have the ability to set uh, the eight digit passwords on cars, uh, only enterable ones. And then that's all. You just, uh, just save the memory. So really nice features. There is nothing else in the workshop, I think, regarding mm -hmm. car mm -hmm. like that. We also have a license system, such as in the screen. So basically, you cannot access the trader without having the proper license. So that could be a good, uh, yes. good feature for servers that want that wants to uh, make the, the player progress in the game. So they can only interact with that NPC once they buy the license. And let's say in that players that they buy the license, the trader, when they there's also another license they can buy, so they can unlock another trader. So they can have a level up system like uh, MMORPG or stuff like that. And I think that's a really good way for servers like XDK to, uh, to make the players happy and uh, keep them playing in the servers to motivate them. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was one of the main issues that we were trying to face at first about like the player progression. And when Trader Plus, like, introducing all the systems put in place for, like, the different, uh, kind of, like, the different tier traders with the different licenses you have to buy. It was just brilliant. Obviously, still needs work, um, especially on the XDK side, but as a core concept and the basic implementation of it is really, really nicely done. Uh, I've always complimented um, Dimitri on that kind of idea because, yes, sure, if you just want a simple trader, trader's just good. That's fine. But if you want something that actually rewards a player for using it, Trader Plus is the way to go. Yeah, and <clears throat> um, I can also, because I had to adapt a bit to the community because I had a lot of requests to make that Trader better and like an improvement of the current Trader we have. So we everything that was able to be done in the current Trader from Jones can be done with Trader Plus. There is even a variable that allows conversion of the trading file of the Jones one. Mm -hmm. So you can basically, uh, in, I don't know, 20 minutes, you can have your server set up with Trader Plus from Trader to Trader Plus. You have like 80% mm -hmm. of the config converted. And that's, I think, something really interesting for servers that want to gain a bit of performances because Trader Plus is uh, performance free compared to the old Trader. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the features, I mean, the features itself are much more interesting for them. They, they have and I don't see myself as a competitor of the market for expansion. We both have the same features for, for most of it. I mean, stock, dynamic price based on the item or item previews, such a thing. We have a lot of people that actually um, care about the same uh, people. There is a lot of servers that are already working with ex expansion, that use expansion stuff. And they, they mm -hmm. like their stuff, so they're going to go with the expansion market. There are other servers yeah. that doesn't want expansion or that, that have so many other mods that they prefer to stay with it or, I don't know, singular mods. And that's the place where Trader Plus can go. So I don't see myself like uh, I need to be better than our, that market uh, exp from expansion because yeah. we all have a place in the community. We all have our goal.
And I actually really like what they did. I mean, it's pretty, pretty well done. Maybe the coding is even better. Than I mean, you know me, lad. Yeah. When I release an update, yeah. there is always a bug. There's then, always there a fucking always, bug. <laughs> there is always a bug. But this, yeah. but that's 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 the thing we both know. Like we can spend hours and hours trying to perfect yeah. every single thing, but there'll always be one little thing that'll fuck everything up. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> really, it's really annoying. Each time I release an update, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna be coding, lag, chilling a bit, and that just my notification pops up, and I'm like, Dimitri, fix your shit, Dimitri, 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 please, <laughs> please, your please, fucking mod. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. do your job. I like that <laughs> sentence. Do your job. It's just, just fucking funny. Sorry for the for the words. No, mate, no, no, no. We swear all <laughs> the time. We don't yeah. give a shit. You're fine. All right. Uh, also, all right, Dimitri, right. just just before we continue on, are you using yep. your um, headset microphone because you keep cutting out? That's all. Oh yeah, I yeah. am. Sorry if uh, I, I don't have a fancy right. microphone as you guys. You know, I'm a simple <laughs> no, guy okay. with a simple headset. <laughs> No, no, that's fine. You just kept cutting out. That was all, and some bits you are like just missing out. So I didn't want to continue on with the podcast without that being fixed. Just because you know, it's, you know, I, can, I don't I can, want people. Yeah. I can check that on my end, of course. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. What else have you I got? What are you else? working on for us, uh, mate? Any other mods in the pipeline? Yeah, any uh, Not in particular. I mean, I do a couple. Uh, work for XK, for example, I spawn selection mod, which is going to be really nice, I think. It's um, that's gorgeous. Take it and uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. I don't know if mm -hmm. we can talk about it a bit because that's like kind of future showcase stuff. I don't know what Kath will say about it. Yeah, I, I'm. I I haven't spoken to Calf much lately about it. Um, I would have assumed yeah. that you would have spoken to him. I can quickly send him a DM, see if he is online. But you, um, but you do do custom work for people. Off. You do do commission work. Yeah, I, I do. I, I do it. Um, I did it uh, a lot uh, last semester because I was in the Asia, uh, because I was supposed to go to Australia, and I did not. So I spent a couple of months uh, doing not. That much, so I spend a lot of time modding, and yeah, I did. I did a couple of commission. So yeah, well, well, what I have sort a lot of any, any sort of stuff that we might be aware of. I mean, there is the rabbit hole that got the purge mod. I don't know if you saw a mod with the purge system. No, I made that one. Um, but no, I'm. I mean, I'm thinking about something that is really famous, but no most. There is nothing really famous I think I've done the last uh, couple of months. I did a lot of work for the Chinese community. Yep. Uh, they need a lot of work and they have special needs. Uh, let's say, let's just keep it that way. They have special needs. They have way to see that I don't like about it, but I mean, they want it, so I'm doing it. But yeah, I don't know. What's, what's it like dealing with the Chinese community? Uh, do you, are you fluent in Chinese or...? No, I'm 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 speaking English with them. Most of the time, they have translator, or mm -hmm. they they do English a bit. But what's really annoying about the Chinese community, without criticizing them, criticize, I don't know if that was is going well. But the thing I don't like is they always copy each other. Uh, I had a guy that wants his stuff done, and everything he wants to be done is exactly Chinese. The, like he wanted some kind of. Uh, UI notification, UI sliding on the screen on the top of the daisy, hanging information about uh, the server and stuff. It needed to be exactly at the same place with the exact font. And it, I was, there is no, there were no real part for freedom in that commission work. So I stopped to work for that kind of community because it's not that great for someone that likes creativity and have more freedom when they have to come work on stuff. But yeah, they really like to have things exactly the same as other already made. So Yeah, that that's more of a without delving too deep into it, that's more of a culture yeah. thing with not just like the Chinese modding community, but like the Chinese in general. Um it's it's a well known fact when it comes down to it. It's it's why they have the negative stigma um that they do 
which is mm. unfortunate. Um, obviously, nothing against the Chinese com uh, like community. No, I, I got uh, a know, couple of ones that use traders. They are incredible, really incredible mm -hmm. people. But um, but that's kind of like um, the kind of a t the, not attention, but kind of like the stigma that they do have. Um, yeah. So I mean, I personally yes. I wouldn't work with the Chinese community, but oh, that's because you're racist. Do for trying. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hashtag cancel that. Cancel. <laughs> no, don't cancel don't, me, please. Don't cancel don't me. I don't want in the corner. I am brew. <laughs> it's a sugar-free I am brew. I'm being Ooh, nice today. Oh, good boy, good boy. Oh, big it's, nice health. Good bit of health. Tastes like shit. No, because uh, this is um, um other than um the uh. Uh, spamming of the Chinese service that we've been seeing lately, which seem to be either there is it's incredibly blown up um, uh, over there in China, or they're running a lot of bots. This is the first information I've had about someone working with the Chinese community, so it's quite interesting for me from that perspective. Because, like Lad <laughs> said, they do have a bad stigma, you know, um, with the the high pings um, coming onto the uh, Western servers and ruining the experience for everyone, and they've got such a bad rap. But it's interesting to actually speak to someone who's dealing firsthand with that community if i wanted to give them a good uh, perspective i saw i saw their servers i saw the the things they were doing it's really incredible i mean all the characters are having second skin for anime 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 stuff uh, yes, they have their I've favorite anime characters uh, in the game they have monsters uh, some kind of magical creatures in the game that they need to attack with guns and stuff that have i don't know how many uh if points and they have particles everywhere glowing yes I've, it's I've really seen. It's, it's not the same game when you when you check can you find a video or something we can watch in the background of this this, this, this <laughs> yeah, sounds quite video... impressive the video I, I, that I've seen was when Extra Case started because we had a we had a very small Chinese um, base um, playing on our servers, and I had to deal with a lot of you know very unpleasant people during that. But the only video I did see, getting back to it, um, was unlisted. I don't think I'll be able to find it again, mm -hmm. but I will certainly try my fucking hardest. I may have something in my hard drive, I need to look for it. So yep. if you don't mind waiting a couple of minutes, I may find something interesting. Yeah. Oh, Does no it... way, I've already found the video. Oh. <laughs> All right. Jeez, that was fast. That beat me. <laughs> share, share, uh, share your screen, mate. Yeah, certainly. Right. The, yeah, because the person who uploaded this video, they played on our server, and they were really pleasant. But this is the kind of stuff that they do get on over there, and as ridiculous as it is, it's fascinating. Oh my god. That's because of what I'm talking about. What the, what the f... That's not the easiest. <laughs> for game. I always say that when I'm doing this error. I need to prove myself. It's not the easiest. It's something else. What the... What the f... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this is awesome. I I it's I would not watch, like watch, to watch, see watch, it. Watch. What in the name of God? Yeah, that's not something. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm agree with in Daisy. Are people are giving out about a hit in the case, sir? When they do <laughs> shit? <laughs> it brings everything into perspective, doesn't it? Jesus almighty. Like, pe people like to give, like, the Chinese community shit with, like, a whole bunch of different stuff. But this stuff is wacky as it is. Yes. It's brilliant. It <laughs> is. I'm not going to lie. This is awesome. <laughs> I've never been so horrified watching a Daisy video in my life. <laughs> there is 
actually something I made for them that could be uh, interesting just to speak about. They asked yeah. me to make them a resurrection. Your character will never die without losing his gear. I mean, the car the gear on the player when dying will always remain on the character when respawning with the same uh, character, actually. Something they want. Mm. So you don't die. You can't die in their servers. You actually die, and then you respawn, and you also have your same uh, your same gear at the same position where you die. So wow. you can't die. You just lose money, I think. Yeah, I did something like that. You lose money on your bank account. I'm genuinely curious as to how they're reskinning the um, characters. It's not that hard. It's no, uh, it's it's, just, it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's yeah, it's just models. That's all it is. Because each uh, like each part, like your hand, your arms, your legs, your torso, your head, it's all separate models, and it's just all connected to a skeleton. Um, it's how when you do custom clothing, say like for example, if you have a custom jacket like Windstride, uh, like like stuff he makes, it's just a model and it connects it to a skeleton and assigns it to the correct bones, and it's done. But it is. I had no it's idea that. <laughs> see, this is why I love getting on so many different guests. We ended up down a rabbit <laughs> hole of talking about China, and then I get to see a video that just quite literally stunned me. Absolutely stunned me what I just saw. It's like, it's absolutely. It's brilliant. It is absolutely fantastic. Like like I said, like people like this shit on the, the, the Chinese community for like the bot servers mm. and whatnot. But s the stuff that they come up with, it, it's yeah, just... Yeah, I mean. I'd, I'd love to take a peek at like how the fuck did they do some of these things? Just out of morbid curiosity. I'm, I'm curious like, you said about monsters and things like that. I'm curious about that now. Um... I can take a look if I can find the record I had, but yeah, I think I have a record where they are fighting a monster. I don't remember if I managed to have it Jeez. before they, they killed him, but uh, I may have something. These Chinese servers have got money to burn by the looks of it as well. <laughs> this shit yeah, they have, a lot of, they have a lot of money to burn, actually. That's insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's mental. Absolutely oh, fucking look, crazy. Clive. It, it's not DayZ as I would want to play it, but yeah, we, we, like we constantly say here, who are we to say how you can and can't play the game? Um, there's a you know, anime is a, a massive thing with a lot of people, and um, I could just imagine a server full of fucking anime characters running around and battling, and just wow, wow. See, that's, um, that's the thing. It's like it's definitely not DayZ. But there are people out there in any modding community that work on an engine just like to see how far they can push it. And that's like the beauty of modding is that you can, it's like um, expansion, uh, you know, with like with the helicopters and, and stuff mm. like that. Yes, we all know that vehicles obviously work in DZ, but n aerial vehicles have obviously never been seen until the, the modders came about. And. Mm. Um, and even Daisy is itself. It was That's pushing. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> but even like Daisy is like as a concept itself. It was. It's you know no matter what you really think about it, it was pushing the Armor Two engine to a limit. Yeah, and it spawned so much shit. I'm not necessarily seeing that these Chinese modders are doing the exact same thing, but they are certainly experimenting. And you, yep. no matter what you think about, is it Daisy? Is it not Daisy? As a modder, it's fucking great. I love it. I, I know there'll be the some feeling, modders. I honestly get the feeling you're going to find some people joining Chinese servers just to see this craziness now, out of out of morbid curiosity, for want of a better word. I'm gonna find my fucking waifu. <laughs> 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 but see, but see, that's 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 the thing. It's like um, I know there'll be some modders out there which will probably trash it, and that's completely fine. But uh, and Dimitri, I don't know if you, you you might be the same. I'm not too sure. But when it comes to like modding in anything anyone does, that really expands upon like what modding is capable of doing. I'm just all yeah. over that shit. Well we always try to push our limits, yeah. the limits of the game and our limits when we do modding. And that's what I like. I mean, everything we can think of, we make it true. And when we make it happen, we're just fucking happy about it. Yeah. 
Yep, you, you, you're making your customers happy. You know, if that's how they want to play DayZ, so fucking be it. They want to run around with very wings on their back and halos and shooting yep. off little flares that start singing happy birthday. So fucking what? It's, it's, it's their experience and <laughs> let them enjoy it. And if it, made, if it makes you a few quid on the side making wacky mods for a mate, go for it. Yeah. Too fucking right. Exactly. I'm... Um, um, yeah. I'm I'm st- I'm still kind of in shock. That was fucking all. Awesome. You've got to send me a link to that, mate. I need to watch that again. It's yeah. it's um it's uh, McKee posted in main chat. Yeah, he's linked to you to it. Awesome, awesome. That that's that's fucking awesome. <laughs> so do you get much work on the well, side? Yeah, I can't find I can't find it. I don't know where it is. Do you get much commission yeah. work on the side while you're looking? Oh no, right now I'm kind of busy. I mean, I, I have my license of uh, engineering school, moving ship Lyon in uh, France, so I will be pretty busy. But yeah. I, pl- I still plan, I plan to maintain uh, my mods, so it takes a lot of time to actually uh, prepare features because people are always wanting new features for the trader. Uh, there is rad zone that need improvement. Planning Toxic zone for now is uh, the way it is because, uh, well, Bohemia is theirs. So <laughs> yeah. un- unless I have a brilliant, brilliant idea about improving it, it will stay that way for now. But yeah, Rad Zone and Tradepress are still on the go and under involvement. I don't see myself making another fourth mod. It's too much time to uh, maintain all of them, obviously, uh, when you're alone and you have a life, a lot of things to do. I mean, I see my friends, I hang out here, sometimes I want to play, I want to do modding, I also have other projects, I also start programming in Python, in C Sharp, in other things, so honestly I'm so busy that I can't do anything. So yeah, commission, nah, but now it's not. It seems to be that commission work is the way to go if you're a modern day Zine early. Because you, you get to make you to. kind of private yeah. mods and you get to make money on the side of it as well, it seems to be the best option to it is to go for i mean it definitely go ahead lads sure no 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 go on mate go on mate when i released trader plus um people were really uh, happy about it and uh and keeping features in the go make it so i was able to make a bit uh, from that mod and i was really happy about it and at at some point i had so many feature ask that i proposed my community to say all right you want that feature in the in the mod you want it fast you want it now so fund it you are multiple uh people mm. multiple users that are on the same fe- so let's say that feature is going to take that amount of time so let's say you're going to donate that amount so that fe- priority and that's something i want to do for the trailer i have uh, a section in my trailer if uh, players if admins want something fast that it can benefit everyone then i let them donate and i work that in priority Mm-hmm. That's uh, the That's, way I think could uh, could be a good way for it's a very clever a idea without having to make commission work that only benefit one singular individual. Hmm. I see you've got I a like Patreon as well. Yeah, I've got a Patreon as well. I'm trying to make it a bit more uh, shiny, but uh, as a programmer, it's uh, a bit complicated because I mean, sharing showcase of what I'm doing. Sometimes it's fun, but I don't know what's interesting, what's worth it for my patrons to see. What I know is my patrons are there for supporting me. They know I do great stuff. If they want to support my great stuff and make me want to make more, then they can join my Patreon and support me that way. Hmm. Yep. Still stunned by that fucking Chinese uh, video. That's freaked me out in ways I didn't think I'd get freaked out. <laughs> it turned you Embraced. on. It turned you on, didn't it? I'm confused and flustered all at the same time. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> shh, 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 shh. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Just, just accept it. One time, you will see. I actually there. want to find out more about that Chinese community now. That that's just blown my mind. They're doing things I didn't even know you could do. Um and playing in ways that yeah, that's that's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's the choice of one point one five guys. Yes, 
Hasn't that created a uh, massive kerfuffle in the community? Uh, a little yeah. bit. Only one part has. Well, but, two, yeah. I reckon two parts: the the fire rate and the um, mm. uh, the hit markers. Hitting- Personally, I haven't seen anyone give out about the fire rates from mm. what I've seen, but I could be wrong. Um, all the posts I done and stuff with the M4. Reactions seem generally okay. It's, people seem more stunned. Like I was stunned that the M4 had been increased to that rate of fire. It was nuts. Um, is it a bad thing? No. Is it a good thing? Meh. I mean, it's nice that they changed it. It, it mixes stuff up a little bit, you know, it gets you to learn the guns again. You know, maybe guns you haven't used before and now you'll actually use. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a good thing. There's nothing wrong with it. Let's well, see. I mean, on my end, I still prefer the SQ mod uh, that brings the mechanics of the weapons in XDK. I mean, I always go, yep. come back to XDK because I really like the way <laughs> mechanics works. It's pretty amazing. It's how it was in C2, and that's how I still like it. Like more, mm-hmm. less archaic than the uh, arcade that it is currently. But that's my point, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Speaking about it like in a vanilla basis, the how do, how to explain it? It's certainly it's really nice that the weapons are starting to reflect their real life counterparts even more so, which it is mm-hmm. great. Like no matter what you think about it, it is really really good because you know it is it's it's bringing that level of um realism or whatever you want to authenticity to the game while also keeping it to the core you know the core thing about the whole game whole DayZ but they really need to fucking buff the recoil of the M4 to compensate for the increased RPM yes you could argue that yeah like the 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 M4 rate of fire doesn't move yeah it's the gun's stupendous now. It's mm-hmm. like it is the the end goal weapon for sure, and the 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 different tiers of weapons now fully reflect it with the introduction of the the A one and the A three. Um, you know, back in the alpha, if I remember correctly, and people correct me, and uh, if I am mistaken in our in our chats, um, the the org was arguably better than the M4 in certain ways. But now, the M4 is overall the better weapon, even compared to the A3, even though they share the same attachments. Heck, you can even put Stanag mags on the A3. It's just down to that rate of fire, right? It's down to the rate of fire, yeah. definitely. And the dispersion for the Orgs are... They're not that good. <laughs> it's the bullets go, in my experience at least... They they go everywhere, so it's a bit like oh well, fuck okay, but they definitely need to up the the recoil even just a little bit for the M4, yeah. and then I could and then I could say <clears throat> the update with the weapons are really cool. I like it. Like I, I actually used the Scorpion for the first time properly since Alpha, and I enjoyed it. And I'm using the MP5, which is going to be a PvP killer. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, like, holy shit, that fire rate. <laughs> and the, uh, like, boy, do you liked the MP5 before? Oh, you're going to love it even more now. <laughs> it's fucking disgusting. It's insane. But, <clears throat> but the hit indicators. Now, I've talked about it in our chats um, about how it could be improved because right now it the, is a concept. It's great, but implementation is pretty piss poor. Um, the, the, the colours and the design of it just do not coincide with the overall feel and scope of the game. If they made it more... Like like I said, if there was two different versions where if you were hit by bl- blunt force... Um, heck, even, for example, you got shot in the head and you have a helmet and obviously it doesn't kill you or knock you out, you would get like that blunt red vignette effect in the direction of where you got hit to, co- to basically tell you, okay... You got hit from that general direction. Look there. But if you were to actually get shot in an unprotected area or stabbed, then the effect could be more sharper 
to signify more of a tearing feeling. Uh, that's kind of like what I recommended. That would be a really great improvement, at least. That's what I think. Um, Mike uh, Doherty, who's, you know, always talks a lot about it. Um, you know, we, we, we spoke at length about it. But a lot of people fucking hate the indicator. Absolutely hate it. But I, I, I'm kind of like on the fence. I do believe yeah. it could have a place in DZ if they do it right. And so far, it's not looking good. Look, a lot of the people that are complaining about it are people who play on modded servers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A lot of the people are complaining about it when they join their favorite modded server when one fifteen comes out within a week, maybe even less. I'd, I'd give it two days. That feature is going to be gone. It won't be seen again on on those servers because they'll mod it out. I know there's already modders we're talking to the Discord chat about removing it. So it was yeah. like, well, it's going to be gone anyway. So what what does it matter to them? You know that way. Um, mm-hmm. Personally, I I see why it's there. It's good help for the more casual or the newer players who maybe don't know where they're getting shot from, especially when you're being shot with a suppressed weapon. Sometimes it can be impossible to figure out where it's kind of coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the thought that there should be a toggle option, either server side or player side, where you don't like the feature, turn it off. You want the feature on, keep it on. I think it should be uh, toggleable for both. Um, servers can yeah. choose whether it's on or off, um, and if it's the server chooses to have it on, the player can choose whether they want to turn it off themselves just in their um, yeah. settings. Yeah, it'd be the easiest option. It will. It'll be the best of both worlds, and everybody be happy. Personally, I think. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah, it's it's kind of like the um, night lights. Like that's a divisive thing. Like some well, some vanilla servers will have it, some won't. Um, I can't fucking stand the nightlight. Uh, that's that shines mm-hmm. around yeah, you. Yeah, no, it's I night. don't like that. Yeah, I can't stand it, and I don't like to play on a server that has it at all. Um, even if the server's like completely fucking pitch black, which mm-hmm. trust us, I've played on a few. It's pretty darn rough, but yeah. having the nightlight would still fuck everything up. So I prefer servers that just outright have it off. And yeah, and like if if a server has that nightlight, I don't like it. I'll either put up with it or I'll leave the server and find a new one. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's what players that's what pe- players will eventually do if there isn't a toggle function. Um, but I do yeah. agree that it, like with the the new base build and stuff that they got going for this update, um, it should be a toggle. Same with the weather, same with everything like that. It should be a toggle. Um, yeah. Especially in the meantime, while they're working on it. Because if they keep uh-huh. it the way it is for the rest of the experiment and have it for stable, a lot of people are not going to be happy about it. And then that's just going to be another mod for people to download and have on their servers just to get rid of this effect, which should be server-based. Like a toggle. But, uh, it's like, yeah. Uh, a lot of people just like... <coughs> overreact. Mm-hmm. To put a, yeah. a lot of people overreact. Like if they actually played us, like I've been playing uh, experimental yeah, for the past three days. And I've been hit so many times with it. Yes, you notice it, but generally you're not going to be focusing on these red things. You know, no, if you're getting no. hit by a zombie or attacked by a zombie, you're going to be focusing on getting rid of the zombie either killing it or trapping it in a building. Um, it's not that bad. I haven't had it in PvP situation now. I could see if you're on a heavy Neither PvP right. server where it could be a bit uh, rough. But, I mean, otherwise, yeah, I don't know. I did see a screenshot when um, a person was being swamped by infected and pretty much the entire screen was just full of red splotches. Yeah. But they literally last for less than a second. Yeah, it's it's kind of similar to like um, when you just get hit normally and you get that red flash. It's very similar to that. Yeah, because I was... Um, I got swarmed on stream and it was like, it was like that. It, just, it was a split second and it was gone again. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I think people really, really don't like change, and people really, really overreact to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I can probably show it off here if you want me to. I'm in game at the moment. Um, yeah, go for it. It's all right. Let me. Uh, sorry. Let me just share my screen. So, because I'm just going off to a town. I'm trying to multitask here and just get footage <laughs> for a video while doing the podcast at the same time because. It's been so hectic, but let me just park up here and not not demonstrate. 
Okay. So I'll just get these zombies to like hit me. See, you don't really like notice it's not like it's not that bad. Yeah. You see, like it it doesn't last long. I will need time to see. adapt and accept it. But yeah. I think it's uh, very, very See, and that's the thing with, like, you know, when people's like, Oh, Daisy's turning into Call of Duty! Oh my god, what the it's fuck? It's nothing it's, like that. It's really not, not a chance. It's... For an experienced player, you don't need it, because, you like, if you know how to play the game, you can easily figure out where you are getting shot from, from just, like, the bullet crack, and obviously the bullet sound if they're not using a surface weapon. You can figure it out, and then you can just go mm. on from there. But for newer players and casual players, I can understand why, because uh, yeah. in the day it's like, you know, they're trying to, you know, they're updating the game, they're always updating it. And yes, sure, they update it for the current current players, but it's also to help bring in new players to the game, which is what mm -hmm. all games and you know all, all things do. Like, you know, it's, it's like as a modder, like you update your mod to make it better for more people to use it, so it's more refined, and that's kind of what they're trying to do here. And yes, they are experimenting with this kind of thing. And like I said, like I've I've already gave my criticisms and my suggestions on how to improve it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's really not a big deal. It really, really isn't. No. At least in my opinion. Um mm -hmm. I still do wish there was a toggle, because personally, even though I don't want think it's a big deal, I don't want to use it. Like yeah. at all. I'd I'd rather yeah. not use it. Fine. But <clears throat> the, this see, this is the joys of experimental. There, there is a possibility they will add a toggle. You know, the experimental is more than likely going to be out for the next month, until well, end of the month at least. So yeah. they have plenty of time to change these things. You know, if it wasn't for experimental, it would be going in in this state. They might change the the way it looks. They might add a toggle feature. You never know what they'll do down the road. Cause they they have fixed things when when twelve came out. Remember all the they done all the damage changes and people yeah. hated it and stuff. And they they changed stuff. So. You don't know what they have in the pipeline. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, only that's for the newbie, I think. That would be interesting. Like, if you start fresh with the game, you have zero hour on Steam, you can have all those helps to help you play in Daisy. And when you start getting confident and good at the game, that could be a feature that gets disabled. So that now you are the ad, the, the helps that we bring to you. So mm -hmm. more like a progression, like you were newbie, so you have a couple of uh, features extra for Daisy to help you understand and spread more. And once you become good at it, then those features are disabled, and now you are like a survivor, a real survivor. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be a cool feature, yeah. But there was some other cool stuff um, that they added. We've got a, a non-military vest, finally, the hunter vest. Um, I didn't realize that was out of the game. I'm not going to lie. I thought that was still in the game. No, you've uh, basically probably just been playing a modded service where it was still an item. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that thing's been in the files for years, for the past two or three years now, something like mm. that. And every time you'd wear it, it would always, like, clip into the body. It just wasn't... It was shit. So right. I'm so happy that they've got it out, because right now it's 35 slots. It, the only attachment it has is a fishing hook. So mm -hmm. if you if you have nothing else... It's not too bad at all. Um, yeah. But if you obviously, if you find like a play carrier, high capacity vest or some shit like that, then you're obviously going to And gonna they, take they also spawn on the hunting zombies, apparently, as well. Yes, you will find one they there. Do. So. Yeah, they do. That's how I got mine. Um, mm -hmm. And I was, I was very, very happy with that. And um, it's, how, it's, how much it's, inventory does it have? 35. Yep. So it's, it's got a pretty. Event. It's, yeah, it's got a pretty decent inventory, and the colors are really nice. So it really helps if you like, if you are going for a hunting loadout, then the colors are really nice. <laughs> it's to it's generally what I go for because I just I hate running around yeah. like Johnny Rambo, um, because then everyone thinks you're just another PvP kitty. Um, yeah, you know I, I, I much prefer the hunting um, gear. Um, looks good and yeah. 
that's it. It's 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 a nice little addition. It's nothing absolutely game breaking, but it's really nice that they're still working on like content that they have developed in the past, but haven't just yet implemented. Yeah. So I'm happy with it. The barbed wire baseball bat, a nice addition. Yeah. I haven't tried it yet, but I've heard it's a one, uh, one hit KO to uh, infected. Awesome. So pretty nice, but I'll have to do some testing on that. The craftable sword off Lamas. That was um, I had a few people <laughs> scratching their head. They're like, "What?" I, I imagine they all thought it was a sword down version of it, so shorter. Um, but no, it was soaring off those That's what I terrible yeah. sights. Yeah, mm-hmm. which which is funny because that stemmed from what um, some Rex said in the stream a couple of days ago. That stemmed from a joke in the office. Like, oh, uh, what, 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 what if we could do if, if we could sew off the fama? So they actually like got some concept. They tried a couple of things and they really liked like what they ended up at, uh, coming out with. So they're like, mm-hmm. "Fuck it, yeah, let's just do it." <laughs> and I'm glad I they might, did. <laughs> I have a fama something at the moment. If I have a hacksaw, I can show it before and after on yep. stream. So <clears throat> I'll keep an eye. I'll have a look for a hacksaw now, and I'll show you. And Mark, yeah. you disappointed me, mate, when you didn't shout out that uh, the new female survivor was Batty. I oh, didn't know who Batty was until last night. <laughs> yes, yes. So, I talked about that. yeah, absolute legend, absolute legend. Um, uh, she broke a lot of hearts when she was the uh, community manager. The the simp boys would go crazy whenever she came into a live stream <laughs> chat. Who's the redhead? Who's the hot redhead? <laughs> but she was just awesome. She was you know, so yeah. involved with everyone across. You know, it was just you only had to look at Twitter and just see the um, general outpouring of um, love um, that Batty has a character in the game now. Um, as I feel, yeah. I feel bad every time I kill her. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I, I, when I saw it, I was like, that that, see, that face seems familiar. And I couldn't quite think about it, and I think it was Dancer Jesus and I were like, we're talking about it. He was like, oh, that's Batty. And I'm like, what's fucking not? No, it can't, it can't be. So I went, because uh, I follow her on Instagram, so I had a look and I was like, oh, fucking hell, yes it is. And then I saw on Twitter, she pretty much confirmed it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's fucking class. I was I was astounded. So Because uh, there, there was pictures from quite some time ago, like a couple of years before Batty, Peter, and all them left. Um, where they were in a room where they were doing like the face scans and stuff like that. So, and obviously nothing ever came from that. So, I guess, I guess now there is. It's so, if nice they're adding the old team, if they're adding Baddy, are they going to add Resin? It's broke. I'd hope so. I mean, like, I why not? Right? Yeah. All the team, I think. They, they, yeah, the bodies can hold the team back then. So, maybe mm-hmm. we're going to have all of them at some point. Be cool. Yeah. I mean, heck, they've even got the fucking tattoo on the back of her neck. I love that. I love that little that, that little detail. Really cool. Nah, it was awesome to see. It was awesome to see. Um, mm-hmm. These sounds for switching the fire mode. Fantastic addition. Yep. It's going to make people uh, think a bit more as well. Um, You know, when you're sitting in that tent standoff with someone and you're like, oh, shit, I'm on semi. I need to be on full auto here. Click. Give away your location and it's it's a it, it's <clears throat> I was talking to Dump Grab about this actually. It's like talking about like playing the game without a HUD and without the UI. And this update seems to really generally point towards that direction of like without having to play with the UI. Mm-hmm. Um because obviously in Alpha you would always get a notification in text, like, I am hungry, I am thirsty, I have a bad taste in my <laughs> yeah. mouth, and stuff like that. And yes, whereas it would, like, destroy the immersion a little bit, it wasn't constantly there. It would only update if something was, like, actually happening. And it was a nice little in-between, and, if you, and you could check exactly, well, not exactly, but you can check, like, a rough indication of where you're at by looking at your inventory. Now, we came up with an idea after like much discussion where it would be really nice if you, would, if you weren't playing with a hood where, say, your hunger went from three-quarter white to yellow. Only that icon would appear for a couple of seconds and then after like a few seconds, it would then disappear to kind of like, all right, you're on yellow hunger now and like it would also play a sound because... 
your belly makes sounds when you're not fucking starving to death. It makes sounds when you're just a little bit hungry. So, at least it does for me. But having little indicators like that instead of like a full UI is really cool. And knowing exactly what like selector you're on with these sounds is just it's beautiful. Yeah. I fucking love it. Simon from the touch. S Yeah, from the S um from the SU mods who who made an S gunplay and S visual, he had that feature uh in his S gunplay mod. And it would be like a lockpick sound to like tell you like which kind of like uh, mode you're on. He can get rid of that now because this is just going to be much better because all so, the sounds actually differentiate. So tell me something, and this is a question. Mm-hmm. I I don't know if it's a complex one to answer. But when the Daisy devs add something like a little sound feature like that, does it make the mods? Like, obviously, then he can remove that sound feature and just add the one for the game. Does that make the mod a little less complicated for him to work on? And I mean, it's one less thing for him to worry about, definitely. It's yeah. like, um, it's like, it's like going to like all back these toggles with like, um, with the weathers and the in the stamina and all that kind of shit. It's mm-hmm. one less mod for servers to worry about, which is better for a server because that's something less for it to have to worry about loading. True. The, the is as much, you know, as you know, a server that only has a few mods runs really, really well compared to a server that has like fucking fifty. Yeah. So reducing the amount of mods having on a server by introducing features into the base game that complement it to make it better, well, there you go. It's 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 great. At least that's the yeah, way I see it. Daytime mm, no, setting yeah, yeah. for night vision scopes there, um, Dimitri. What do you think of that? Night vision. I, I don't really know. I mean, would it look like the daytime, or is it just uh, it improves the night vision when it's daytime? I, I don't really see It improves the, the night vision can... when it's daytime, pretty much. Um, yeah. It's on my update video if you want to check it out. I have footage of it um, working. Right. Um, you, you, you see clearer, you see. You see better? Yeah, because when you... Yeah, so... Go on, lad, you can explain. You'd know better. Radio. Oh, thank you. So um, so when you have the night vision scope in your hand, you can have the option to toggle it, to yeah. um, have it for the day or night, and the model will also uh, be changed to show that. With the new NATO one, it'll have a cap over it, um, and it'll uh-huh. have like three lenses and a triangle formation to kind of like show that, okay, this is for the, for the daytime. And the same with the Russian one. When it's nighttime, you'll see the full lens. All it does, it basically just makes it so how you would typically see through the night vision at night is exactly the same for the day if you swap it for the day. So oh. it, yeah. it's quite... I think it's a neat feature because then you don't have to constantly swap scopes and stuff like that to like depending on yeah. the day and night. So if you if you primarily use a night vision scope, just plunk it in your hand, put it daytime, and there you go. You still got the same effect, and you you, you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, plus, you know, whatever. But I, I think it's I think it's a nice little detail. Um, Makes it more I'm useful. Not too, yeah, definitely. It definitely does. Um, I don't know. I never, really, I never really used the night vision. I mean, a couple of times when I was playing, yeah. but uh, there is so. I mean, most of the servers you play uh, are don't have night. Or pass so fast that you don't have time to find the night vision or having them and actually <laughs> yeah. finding a guy to kill yeah. with. So uh, it's great. So we have the daytime settings now because we're gonna be. Able so in a way, that's that's useful. A little simple mm-hmm. one there. Metal wire can uh, now be crafted out of barbed wire. So, yeah, that'll be cool for the um, uh, base builders and the people who love to get booby traps and that. So, yeah. yeah. You have no idea how difficult it is to find barbed wire when you're trying to build a base and you cannot find that piece, <laughs> but you find bar- or metal wire, but you can find barbed wire everywhere. It's, it's yeah. a nightmare. So it's a great op- little never, addition there. I never understood why it was not a thing yet. Because yeah. it, sounds, it sounds logical. Hmm. This made me very happy, though. Ski masks and balaclavas would clip with several pieces of headgear. That was an yes. own goal for ages. It just made Daisy look uh, bad. 
um, yeah. that these items that you know quite often you would pick up and then it would clip through and you go, holy shit, they can't even uh, render this probably uh, properly. What's the rest of the game going to be like? So I'm glad this is finally fixed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. It's definitely something that they should have tried to focus on when the new renderer came out, when the new engine was introduced in 0.63, in the new character models. Um, it's great that they finally got to it. Um, you can definitely tell, though, that not to shit on the team at all, because, you know, I love what they do. But they were definitely trying to find something to make this update worthwhile on top of getting the orgs back in. Because um, there's, there's stuff here which, you know, they should have been fixed a long time ago and they never were. So now it's like, well, okay, now we have the time, we can just crank this out, get it all done and dusted. Brilliant. Um, for those kind of fixes, which, you know, I'm not complaining, definitely not. But I, I, I think I said to you yesterday, Boydie, 1.50... Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> 115 is definitely not a major update. Is 114? Mm. But still a very... Oh, no, God, one. no. I, I was... I, personally, I was never expecting it to be, like, such a major update. We always knew, no. like, 114 was going to be the big one, and then this be the last one of the year, so it's not going to be as crazy. Yep. But still good, though. I'm not complaining, anyway. This was huge, though. Grenades can't be pinned anymore. So fucking happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was cheesy a bit, I mean, to be able to pin them back. I mean... Look, and it gives them the option to add in the F1 grenade uh, from um, Russia there, Dimitri, mm -hmm. um, which has the um, adjustable fuse on it. Yeah. <clears throat> I hope they do. Yeah, yeah. I really hope they do, because um, that's because we we made. I, th I mean, we made quite a stink about it, and um, and there was you know we had a quick, a bit of a heat discussion about it. So it's really really nice that they did make that change. Um, I can't really complain about it. Obviously, there will be people who will complain. But, oh yeah. I mean, it, once you have a basic of understanding of how grenades actually fucking work in real life, you cannot really make that complaint. Yeah, so all the people who are commenting on my tripwire video saying, oh, it's an in-game feature, it's not an exploit. You stick that one off yourself now. <laughs> you can stick it up your fucking ass. You Dance Jesus has got a ride um, and scale speeder as yeah. well. It is a major, major update for console, um, giving oh, yeah. them access to a lot more um, functionality. Um, and... Yeah. As DOJ says there, we, um, we're only supposed to get four updates this year. We got five. Um, one thing that uh, surprised me was people scratching their heads at the dry bags um, can now be repaired with the tyre repair kit. Um, and people are wondering why. And it's like, well, the dry bag is waterproof. Everything inside it is waterproof. Using a sewing kit or something like that on it, it would, it would lose its um, uh, water, uh, waterproofness. So by mm -hmm. using a tyre repair kit instead... So, yeah, that, that kind of surprised me that not more people worked that out. Um, but that's I, I like that they've done that. It's a bit more realistic. Um, and I know you've got mm -hmm. to balance gameplay versus realism, but, you know, DayZ to me is more about realism than it is about gaminess. Yeah. Mm. They always that's focus true. on details, things that we modders don't usually. That's cool. I mean, yeah. details are what makes the game so realistic yes. and so... So incredible. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, there was a bunch of other stuff in there. But overall, I think it was a solid uh, mod. The, the rate of fire thing, um, the, uh, there'll be a lot of people with opinions on that. Um, <clears throat> I've seen the argument of its uh, gameplay versus realism. Um, you know, like everyone's saying, the M4 is pretty much end game now. Get yourself an M4 and um, you'll pretty much own anything. But, you know, you, as you said, lad, the MP5 is just as good at close range. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I really don't have too much of an opinion on it. Um, I've seen the footage where uh, someone had a link to a video of a guy shooting an M4 um, and it was just tearing through the magazines. Um, if anything, yeah. I probably lean to more to, well, try to make them all uh, more as, as realistic as possible. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's one thing that, like I said before, which I'm really happy is that the the weapons are now starting to really reflect their real life counterparts a bit more. Yeah, which is great. I mean, 
I still think that, like I said before about the M4 having the recoil like slightly nerfed or buffed or whatever you want to think about it, um, you know, so it has a little bit more of a kick, but that's just to balance it out uh, compared to for like you know for for the gameplay aspect. Um, I don't know, but like I, I've, is, I've been playing vanilla setting servers, and the M4 is not easy to find anymore. No, Toxic sounds, that's, that's where you'll find it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. So it's it, like I said, it's 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 good that they are taking the steps. They realise that the increased fire rate is making this weapon really top of the line, absolute end game. And if you are playing just primarily um, vanilla servers, you cannot really fucking go wrong. And mm. I, I like I cannot wait to find <laughs> an M4 now for the first time. Since uh, Alpha, I was like, oh my god, I've got a fucking M4. Fucking oh, yeah. yes. But right now, I've got the, the both of the Orgs, and I'm quite happy with that. I found the uh, a hacksaw. Do you want me to show you the difference between the famous before and after? Yes, go for yep. It. Oh, really? Uh, Daisy Experimental. Yeah. Can you all see that? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yep. All right, gonna fire my like five shots. Yeah. For the twenty-five dollars, bud. Thank you very much. Oh. I'm gonna fire five shots in semi-auto just to see what it's like with the iron sights, and then I'll cut it and fire five more. God, so. they're fucking horrible. Right? Where's my hacky hacky saw? It's it gets to a point where Dante Jesus, <laughs> who's like going on about the famous before he found it, fucking hated the gun. Mm, yeah. <laughs> We have it now. Handle the Zaffa. So much better. Mm -hmm. I did see people be like, well, why don't you just put a rail on it? It's like, well, that's not the fucking point of the weapon. Like, it's, yeah. if you just put rails on it, it's just going to be another M4. Whereas mm -hmm. you need to have limitations for the weapons you have. It's like the Scorpion. The only thing you can have attached on it is a suppressor. And it's such a low caliber that in a firefight, it's... Even with the increased fire rate, you you might be lucky to get a kill, um, especially if they don't have any weapons or anything like that. Like if they just got like melee or some shit. <clears throat> the MP5 is a bit better, but the UMP, even though it's got a slower rate of fire and you can only put an optic and uh, a suppressor on it, it's got virtually no recoil. So that'll be a really fantastic close quarters, low caliber, PV like weapon. But then when you get onto the AKS 74U, which is a nice step up from the M from the UMP, you can't you can only put on a stock and a suppressor. And that kicks like a fucking bitch. And you really have to try hard to control it. And it just gets more and more, you know, the the, the, the better weapons that you find. And it's all about having that level of progression with your weapons. If you just make a weapon like the Hamas and you decide to put it a rail on it, then what's the fucking point? Same with the M16, um, you know, that's the only thing you can put on that is the, uh, like the, not, like the suppressor. That's it, you can't put optics on it. And people are like, oh, let's put a rail on it so you can put optics. It's like, well, no, what's the fucking point? Mm. You gotta have that level, right? You just gotta have that level of like the progression for your weapons. And just doing that with the FAMAS is turning it from a, Weapon nobody wanted a bloody touch because of the op like the sights to something that's actually viable. I like, I like just what like Spud just said in chat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love how they and, listened to the feedback and found an innovative way of addressing the issue. I, I love that, mm -hmm. and I love the description that you've got up on the screen as well. <laughs> the handle has been sawed off for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many stuff for you? I like that's that. Pretty See, good. And it's like, and it's like the devs, they'll have, a, they'll have a little joke about it. And yeah. People give them shit, but they do come up with innovative ways to, to get around a problem and to, to address it, which is really great. Now's actually a good time to bring something up. Um, I've had a bit of feedback lately um, that uh, at times we go too easy on the dev team. Um, mm. you know, when we're criticising some of the decisions that are made around DayZ um, and that um, you know, we need to go harder on them. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Um, most of our angst is aimed towards Bohemia Interactive itself. Um, yep. The dev team 
I think, are doing the, the best they can with the resources that they have at their disposal. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I, there's times where we do question it. You know, like you said before, lads, something should have been fixed ages ago, but you know they can only do what they can do. Um, yeah. And I 110% believe that Adam and the rest of the team, Scotty and 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 Co, they love this game with a passion um, and mm-hmm. want only the best for it. Um, but. BI, I, I'm constantly left scratching my fucking head at the decisions they make, Dimitri. Um, you know, even yeah, down to things well, like, you know, I, I don't know why they're not approaching modders like you um, with, you know, would like to pay you to take your mod and incorporate it into the game. Um, you know, offering a, um, uh, basically buying out a, um, a, an intellectual property from you. Um, and then doing whatever changes they need to to incorporate it into the base version of the game, um, yeah, it, it leaves me scratching my head. Yeah, well, Bohemia and Daisy, they are not really getting well along. I mean, Bohemia owns Daisy, but at the same time, they don't really care about it for some reason. They always seem to care more about armor than Daisy, and because of that, we had the worst development, I think, of a video game, and at the end, it's still it's great. Which yeah. is incredible because when you see the stories, when you see how Brainix talk about how development was when he was, yep, and you see how messy it was, how many problems they had, and that there is still a big community behind the, game. and they wish we're still here, we're still playing it, and we still try to improve it and talk about the. Game. So at the end, it's really easy to be to criticize to criticize the the team, but at the end, what would we do? At the, at the place. I think yeah. they really do what they can. And I don't blame them for whatever whatever they're doing. I think they, they can. And if they didn't credit me, I don't I don't really care this way. Honestly, I don't really care. That's how, that's how it works. It would have been cool for me, but that's just a wish. So honestly, I'm above it. Look, and we've um, had feedback before, uh, Mark, about they need to do more with modders. It was actually nice to see just this week they tweeted out the Banog map. Um, yeah, you know, I saw that, yeah, that last community spotlight didn't have a mention about modding in it. They need to do more to support the modders, whether it be, um, you know, crediting. Um, you know, I personally feel that there should be, as much as it might piss off the key, the console community, I think there should be a section of the community spotlight each month that addresses one or two mods that have come out um, that are popular or they've done something innovative, they've done something amazing. You know, content creators. Uh, always, you know, the, um, whether it be the um, screenshotters like Wellington, who's been featured a few times, um, the artists, um, uh, you know, who are creating content or streaming, um, they're always over the moon ecstatic when they get shouted out in the community spotlight. Let's extend that love to the modding community as well. Um, let them know that Daisy, BI may not, but the, the, that Daisy. Um, appreciates what you guys and girls are doing to keep this game pumping along um, for the community. You know, whether it be just through the mod you're creating, inspiring them to add stuff to the game, uh, but they need to do that. That needs to happen ASAP, in my opinion. When you see yeah. where the players are playing right now, it's on mostly on modded servers. Yeah. And all those mods, without them, I don't think all the player base will be there. Yep. So at the end, we matters, I think. Even we, if we, in our words, say, yeah, I'm just a programmer, just do a couple of stuff. In all together, we matter. So we should get a place. Hashtag adopt the motto, folks. Um, I've been, <laughs> we, we, we've done a massive cleanup of the um, podcast Discord, um, but I'm actually going to speak with uh, Mr. Rhino, the guy who I commissioned to do it, um, about starting up a channel where we can start listing the Patreons or PayPals of some of the more notable, reputable uh, modders out there in the DayZ community. So people have got a few bucks. They've had a win on the GGs or um, fucking Rubet or whatever. Um, <laughs> some people will get that reference. Um, Rubet's dodgy as fuck. Please don't go to Rubet, folks. Um, it's an online crypto casino that's dodgy as fuck. Hashtag ad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, um, yeah, so you can slip a few dollars the way of, you know, the, the, the true legends of the game um, who, are, who are doing some amazing, like we saw with that fucking Chinese video, man. That's just fucking awesome. It's, you know, they, you wanted to watch it again. 
Well, okay, you're going to have to decipher that one there for us, uh, that comment in chat. What does that mean? Sequise expert ilore pefa le melua ecole the indigena de el fort pahasad. How bad did I say that? I think it's French, not really, Spanish. It's really, really bad, and I think that's one of the. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can trans. I can translate. Yeah, please. So, who's that expert who will have done the best engineering school of Belfort? It's my engineering school here. Where I'm. <laughs> so. Just saying, who's the best here? Who's the best engineer here on live? So that you just amazing, doing yeah. fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, my, no, my French not extends, the best. My French extends to pretty much what Dancer Jesus just wrote. We oui, we oui, surrender baguette, yo play menage a trois. Um, is about all I know in French. But honestly, I don't know what you spell, but I didn't hear anything that sounds French. Somehow put on the Mexican accent while reading French. I don't know how it came about. <laughs> I'm terrible. I mean, I mean, I'm terrible with accents. I always end up sounding Jamaican. Yeah, I'm mine. Oh, yeah. Language can be rough, especially oh, yeah. for English natives. Yes. Even yeah. why, why should you care about learning another language? Common one used in the world. Hey, lad. <laughs> Hi. How are you doing? I, I, I wish I knew um, another language. Um, uh, mm. Just yeah, it, it's it's one of the things I hate about um, the uh, English um, uh, or Western sort of. Yeah, America's not too bad. A lot of people there can speak um, Spanish um, mm. as a byproduct of a multicultural society. But here in Australia, we are such fucking. Peasants, mate. Yeah, it's English, and uh, there's some. Who, my son's not too bad with Russian um, and um, Chinese characters. He can decipher a lot of Chinese language now. Um, but yeah, for the for most part, yeah, you know, the schools barely even teach it. There was about two languages that you could learn at school here in Australia. That was Italian and Japanese. Uh, for some reason, uh, but yeah, yeah. Well, I want to reassure you. In in France, we are we really suck about languages as well. And if I speak English well, it's only because I start and I manage to talk with people in the game but instead that's, that's, of killing that's only them. Because so you guys have got a chip on your so, shoulder that England so I, um, um, uh, became the uh, major. Um, what, what would be the word? The major influence on the world. The French have always had it. Fucking English. Fucking English. Ah. Glad Love you, Dimitri. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm very, I'm very fluent at Boganese, especially the uh, North Queensland dialect of by uh, Boganese. You what, mate? You what, mate? <laughs> you fucking what? But yeah, if no, there's I'm one all... language I would. Well, sorry. I was just going to say, if there's one language I would love to learn, is Czech, because I want to visit Prague. Yeah. Mm. A lot of those Eastern European languages, um, if you know one, you can generally uh, get by with a lot of it, uh, from what I understand. Um, Russian. Yeah. I speak Russian. Mm -hmm. But that's not really true. That's more the north part. I mean, uh, Lithuania, Lithuania, or Belarusia. All those countries, they speak Russian as a um, second language. Yep. But uh, Poland or other countries, they speak their own language. They don't understand Russian. I walked, um, we spent two to three weeks in Russia, um, and my Russian extended to spesibo uh, or spesiba, which means thank you. Um, and I couldn't even remember the spesibo. Uh, I couldn't even remember the um, word for water. Um, I just walked around asking everyone for bon aqua, um, which would be basically like walking around saying, I want a bottle of Perrier or uh, Mount Franklin. Uh, it was a specific brand of water. Uh, but yeah, um, what, what would you like to drink? And you know, I'd have my little thing, my little translator and a bon aqua, bon aqua. So yeah, yeah uh, I'm an absolute peasant. Sort of Russian, so uh, I know a couple of words. It's so useful sometimes when you speak with Russian that needs help in the in the community. They like to hear a couple of words from their own language. Yep. Since nobody really talk Russian except there, so still funny. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see what else we've got on the agenda, folks. Um, there was there was a bit of stuff Sorry. happened this week. Um, scrolling back up. Um, Oh, Dimitri, I also wanted to shout out one thing you did, mate. Um, now, we talked yeah. about um, – um, why is this not – or do I have – I do, I do, I have – second. Well, 
when the toxic zone came out, I found this back in your um, um, Twitter feed line as well, mate. Um, when everyone was talking about the um, toxic zone, oh, Brian Hicks tweeted out, and you came in and said, as the maker of Toxic Zone might, I have to admit that they killed it with the with that dynamic Toxic Zone event. What is currently in 1.14 is really what I always wanted for Toxic Zone. Make the game harder. Now have to define where the idea is from. That doesn't matter. Good job, Dev. So um, that was you showing pure class on Twitter, mate. So much respect. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah, I meant every word I said. And it sounded like a fight uh, in the comments. So I just wanted to calm things down by... Just saying, yeah, I know, I accept what they did, and I, uh, I yeah. Now, an interesting idea from one of our uh, watchers of the show, DPS Farlong. Um, an idea for the future: lodge bullets. This could be a thing where weaker rounds, your twenty-two, three eighty ACP, can get stuck in the player, and it'll cause a disease if they don't get it out using a knife or pliers. Just a little shower thought. Um, and it's nice. A lot of people like that idea. I know um, Dumpgrass uh, Metallurgy mod. Uh, and ammo making mod, um, when you shoot a player, there's a chance for the rounds to actually lodge um, in the player uh, that you can mm -hmm. take out and extract and melt down again to use. Um, Ghouls, you don't like this idea? OG11? I didn't mind it. What do you think of it, Marks? Yeah, I like the tweet. Yeah, I thought it was uh, quite a cool idea, to be honest. Uh, it would give you. It would make you have to worry a bit more about getting into certain gunfights, right? Um, maybe armor could play a, uh, a part in it as well. Maybe the instead of the bullet getting wedged in your skin, you know, a plate carrier gets wedged in the plate carrier, for example, or something like that, and you can pry it out with a knife or something, you know? Um, especially on vanilla, it could make your life even more valuable than it already is, uh, you know, with a sickness or something like that. It would mm -hmm. give, uh, it'd be a cool to have another sickness in, maybe a new uh, medicine of some sort that would uh, cure it. Yeah, I like the idea. I did, I did like the idea. Vlad? No. No, I don't like it. I just don't think it's, um, how to explain it. I can understand as a concept. I think it would be really interesting as a mod. I mean, Dumpgra has already done it. Um, but surrounding that, he's created systems and mechanics that help complement it. So you'd have a reason to take the bullets out of, an, of infected or players and whatnot to then reuse. Um, would, would the same be for Vanilla? Would they have like uh, presses where you would do all these kind of like these mechanics and that yes sure you'd have to dislodge it in that but then that's just like it's just one more thing that you'll have to how, how that to explain be done in vanilla i mean you are, in vanilla it's realistic so you're gonna have to see the wound you're gonna have to see the part where you, the, the, and you're gonna have the action where you, the knife is removed the the bullet and i, I don't really see the Daisy team uh, doing all of that just for removing bullets from bodies. Even if that's really cool, could be a mod with only an icon where you icon or right, so bullets in my body, I need to, uh, or mm. I, will, I will get infected. That could be a mod feature, but I don't see it as a game feature. Uh, the way mm. I see it is the realistic part. I mean, so uh, I'm kind of agree with that, but uh, could be still cool. Yeah, it would definitely be cool if implemented properly, but there's just so many things that they have to go down first to make sure that when they in if they ever introduce that kind of mechanic, there there's UI elements and other gameplay uh, mechanics that are there to complement it. Like right now, like you know, when, when with your diseases. Like you don't exactly know which kind of disease you have until your symptoms come about, and that's yeah. fine. That's what that's okay. just wrote that in chat. The, the, that is <laughs> difficult unless you're an experienced player. Um, identifying yeah. what's wrong with you is how often do you see it on Daisy Reddit or in the Facebook groups? There's something wrong with my character. All the fucking time. Yeah, exactly. You always like you always see post about like oh I got these symptoms and that, and you have to learn and you have to do that kind of stuff. Like your your character's not a doctor; they're not going to immediately know exactly what is wrong with them. If you get shots, like you're gonna like if you were, how would I say it in real life? In real life, if you were shot, 
you're not going to know exactly how to dislodge that bullet out safely without causing extra damage to yourself. Like, if you seriously expect a person who's washed up on the shore, uh, who's who, you know, in, to get shot by I don't know, nine millimeter or something like that, it's lodged in their arm. Like, what they're going to do? They're going to get like a knife or pliers or something to like get it out. No, they're going to end up cutting a fucking artery or something like that and bleeding out to death. Just having something like that is not going to be practical in day Z, because it's, it's going to completely um, drift away, in my opinion, of what your character is supposed to be. It's why I think, um, whereas, you know, the rate of fire weapons are really cool, you really should have more, um, more effects to the character for when you shoot. Like, you aren't going to be able to maintain this, this recall of this high rate of fire weapon uh, properly. Mm. Um, you, you need to train yourself to do it, which obviously players do anyway. You know, they've got fucking thousands of hours to do it, you know, shit like that. But even so, I don't... As a mod, definitely. Like I said, Dumpgrass already done it, and he's done it in a really good way that complements that feature. But I can't really see it happening in a vanilla. Um, but, yeah, it's... that That's the way I feel about it, but, I mean, whatever. Next, someone will suggest ingrown toenails or blisters. <laughs> this isn't scum. <laughs> well, actually, thinking about that, that would be a great feature for scum. That would be a great feature for scum. I, uh, but not for Daisy. Like the, the, the bullet dislodging. Interesting concept, though. Very interesting concept. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, definitely. Now, I wanted to do an update. I had this as a topic um, last week, uh, but forgot to mention it. Um, so modern, um, kind of sad, um, but has finally uh, said that he's going to be stepping down as owner of the wall in the coming months. Been a hell of an experience, but I no longer enjoy Daisy and do not have time to manage the servers. The wall will continue running services. I uh, service. I would just not be a part of it. It's really fucking sad that this has happened. Um, um, you yeah. know, third temple and Fonzie and the those people who shouldn't be named, um, was it worth it? I can't really have an opinion on it, really. I just worry who are they going to turn their attention to next? They'll probably just continue targeting the wall. Maybe. Maybe until the wall's completely dead. But I don't know. I really, really don't know. Like I said, I don't really have an opinion on it. Too much? Yeah, sorry. I was uh, muted. I thought I was unmuted, but um, I don't think the attack's going to stop on the wall. They're going to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, they seem like you asked which server they're going to cause next. It seems like the wall's the easiest service to hit. Um, I haven't heard of any other servers being hit by these guys. Personally, anyway, they could be, but I, I haven't heard of them. So I, I, it's not going to make a difference. The context is um, they got hit with um, uh, this... We, we, we've shown it once on the stream. I really don't want to show it again, but um, basically they, they've got this hacker tool where... Um, how, how would you describe it, lad? What, the weather? Yeah. Um, they basically override the rain clamp and they basically turn it to, like, pff, God knows, unspeakable levels. They mm. They completely destroy... They have the potential to destroy headphones and damage hearing. Uh, that's one of the things that they do, from what I've seen. They also um, do, the obviously, the typical cheater stuff, but they also crash servers um, with exploits, from what I recall. Um, I don't know the full extent of all the stuff they do, partially because I don't follow. I don't, like, to be honest, I don't care. Um, so I, I don't know the full extent of what they do. Um, who's making them... their tools? No, the, 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 apparently they make it themselves. But there's been rumours for the past few months that certain modders in the community are making hacking tools and shit like that and selling them to people or whatever. I don't know if that's true or not. I, I'd like to believe it's not. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Because it happened to happened to Summit One G when he's playing uh, last time he played Daisy. Uh, that rain glitch thing that came off to him and he flung his headphones across the room because it like, nay, no, he deafened him. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So yeah, like it can happen to anyone, big or small. Mm-hmm. Enough on that. Let's talk about something more positive. There were some really cool Halloween dress ups um, through the week. Um, I saw, I saw Dr. Peppermint. Yeah. It's incredible. I really like his makeup. Yes. Yes, you did do a decent job, my friend. What else did we hmm. have? This one blew my mind. Be evil. How no. good are those? They are very good. They are absolutely fantastic. I really, really, really fucking love them. I, I think Amish Zed's one's my favourite. Yeah, really, really nicely done. In fact, all of them are really, really nicely done. The complexity for the second one. Whew. I don't know um, how they made those, but pretty fucking true. Absolutely stunning stuff. Absolutely stunning. Um... <laughs> and I absolutely love Sony Baloney's. Uh... Oh, the Christmas <laughs> is so nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the, made the out denim of shorts, card. the wellies, the can of beans. Yeah. The skull mask. Uh, that's from the day one service, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. And then you a closer look at that press vest. Pretty sure that press vest is made out of cardboard. I'm not too sure, but it's fantastic. Either way, it's done. very good. Yeah, it's really, really fucking cool. It will be the same costume without the press vest. No, y- you need the press vest. You absolutely yeah. need it. Very well done. Very well done. Just something cool to see some people in the community doing some cool stuff. Um. Something for you modders. Hashtag adopt a modder. I, I saw <laughs> yeah. that one. I saw that one uh, today or yesterday. I was so fucking laughing about it. It's so true. Yeah. It just it made me laugh. Me, it uh, just made me laugh when I saw cool, it. Man. It was like, yeah, I could just imagine the modders being like, I know how to fix that bug on line 255. And then you just lay there. And pretty much. No, no, no. I woke up. I wake up and I fix it. And then I go back to sleep. I- I'll sleep in the way. There, there, there has legit been times where I've tried to sleep for work and I've woke up in the middle of the night, figured out what the fuck is wrong with something and fix it. Or there'll be times where I just physically cannot sleep because my mind's constantly on something I've been working on. I'm like, I can do this this way and I can do it this way. And it's like... That's the modern stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. Annoying. Your brain is never I rests. Sh- Hashtag just modders things. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just gave me a bit of a yeah, chuckle. It is awesome. Yeah, it, I, I, I quite, I quite liked this. I quite, I quite liked it. I thought it was pretty funny. They understand how a plight. Now the Bannock map is getting a bit of attention mm-hmm. this week. Finally, fucking hell! It's only took God knows fucking how long. I'm really happy that Cabello is actually getting some positive attention towards it. What there was a, a Happy Bombs released a server. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, you know, Wells Daisy right there. He's just said now his, his more successful one. Cannot fucking fault that at all. Um, you know, so yeah, you got Zero, Banov, you got Green Hell, which, Jesus Christ, Zero is fully capped at 65. Green Hell is nearly 60. Daisy Sanctuary. Um, oh shit! Okay, uh, that's thirty-four out of sixty. Rabbit Hole PVE twenty-two out of sixty. A Deutsch Wolf Banov twenty-one out of sixty. And you know it, it goes more and more. But but this time, a couple of weeks ago, you'd be lucky to reach ten on a server. Mm. And now there's fully populated servers or close to it. I know. It. Um, like... uh, I was playing it. I think on Thursday on stream, and Cabello came mm. in. Uh, and he was like, um, if um, I had a bottle of alcohol, I'd be so drunk. I'm so happy right now. And I, I feel genuine pride and call me vain if you want, but I feel um, quite proud of helping someone get more attention on something they do. It's the, the primary yeah. reason why I started the Daisy podcast is because there was nothing like it. Um, yeah, I've got my spotlight series of interviews. Um, my focus is as much as possible 
on small content creators. Uh, but it was just awesome to see him getting some attention. But sad at the same time because some fucking wanker put a DMCA claim on him. Yeah, I was just about Talk to about, mention yeah. that. That's fucking it's always bullshit. like that. There is always people to be angry about other people's success. Like, that's get how a you know fucking, it's, uh, good get a stuff. life. Yeah, but I mean, there's always people getting angry about successful people always, no matter what field. Yep. That's how you know you're good. So, good <laughs> for him. I mean, yeah, I mean, despite the DMC, I'm still, I'm still proud of him. I mean, I, I know when, you know, when um, I gave criticisms on how the map was at first, and then I saw how much he was actually improving it, I was so fucking proud of him, and I still am now. And I was I was going to actually play in the zero servers, but I guess I can't because the fucking full pop and there's probably a queue. Bastard. I actually messaged how I'm happy <laughs> bombs um, probably about Wednesday or something like that and said, do you have a ban off server? And he goes, no. Uh, should I look at it? And I said, yes, mate. It has come so far. Um, Wolves Daisy, he's got one, like we said. Um, it's just... It, it's it, you go into the Twitch category and there's quite a few people playing in the, on the ban off server. It's just, it's, mm. it's so beautiful. Um, but the, the thing people need to be aware of is Banov's not going to be for everyone. It's probably no, not the greatest be. PvP map out there um, because it's big. I was watching um, Minder stream and I asked him and he said, you know, there's a lot of large distances between towns and all the rest of it. But for those who so. like to explore, those who like to just roam and go from the, – the villages on that map are fucking massive. They're not tiny little, you know, a dozen um, houses. They are, you know, mm -hmm. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 fucking buildings um, and, and stretched out in a realistic format, like following a road. And, you know, you could spend an hour searching one village. Um, I've, I've been going through spark plugs like crazy on the map because I'm still not used to driving and I've been – ramming and fucking the spark yeah. plug seems to be the easiest thing to ruin um even more so than the radiator um and then having to leave the car and go and search for another spark plug and um just you know spending an hour plus searching a town and um it is just it is it's it's beautiful for something different to try um and because of the sheer scale of it 256 square kilometers it's a map made for helicopters what will be the population sure. you think for such a server? How many players? I, well, be able well, to I, I don't play? know um, how the bigger servers are going. I'd be very interested in knowing um, from Wolves and um, from um, uh, uh, Zero, the Zero servers, how how it's handling big populations, especially the city. The city is beautiful. Needs a bit of tweaking, and you know, like I tweeted out. Send your feedback to Cabello. I told him he needs to create a place of interest in the big city, whether it be a fortified area with a few military tents, just, you know, tier two, tier three leap, uh, not to, not the tier four stuff, but somewhere that creates a, a place of interest for characters. Um, it, it's great for base building as well. He's got so many buildings that he's added his own little twist to it. Like I found mm. this apartment building and I went up to the front door of it and you couldn't get in. They were barred off. But if you went around the back of it, there was some containers and stuff and you could climb up on the containers and then get inside the building by getting around the back of it. Um, another town which has got these massive walls around um, the Novo Town Hall um, tower. Um, it's just, yeah. It's, it's phenomenal. It is an absolutely – the, the community-based servers are really going to love this map, um, mm -hmm. and the quality of it is is pretty damn good. Like Spud, uh, my mate from Daisy Down Under, he's very picky as to what maps he will put in um, because he wants a high standard of quality, um, and he's been happy pretty much so far with what he's seen on Banoff. Um, have you had a go on it yet, Marks? No, I haven't had the chance yet because I've, I've heard what – like of how big it is, so it's it's one you'd have to take a couple of days to probably adventure. I so I, I haven't like... even I've probably got ten to twenty hours on it um, so yeah. far, um, and I've probably only done forty percent of the map, um, and that's mm. pre pre predominantly only along the main roads. There is so much yeah. stuff off. Have you had a go on it, Dimitri? No, I haven't had the chance, but I really look forward to because uh, it speaks to me. It's uh, kind of exploring stuff that I really like and meeting people in 
the way in a place I don't expect them to be is what I really like in yeah. that game. Yep. It's it's what it's one that like for me it's a it's a match made in heaven. I just wander around getting lost and um just exploring and finding new places and um then you know the the that's the population on the server I play on builds. Um yeah, you know, like you said, mate, um having someone, you know, be, you, you bump into someone or someone fires a shot at you and a heart in your throat moment yeah. and what about you, lad? Have you had a go? Yeah, I've had a go. Like I said, I played on uh, Zero Servers, and I played on Green Hell. I quite like it. I've only been stuck in the main city down down south. Yep. I've never been able to venture more because I just haven't had the time to really try. But I, w- I will do it tonight. I'll try out the Wolf server. Um, Shout out to the Green but... Hell server as well. Um, mm-hmm. They actually sent me a message thanking me for playing on their server, um, mm. which was a very nice thing of them to do. I don't know why they'd be ecstatic that I'm playing on it, but it, you know, it, does, it does wonders for my ego. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, definitely a server to check out. If you can't get onto you know, the more well-known servers, Green Hell server, I loved my time on that server. It was a very well-set-up server. Um, so yeah. definitely worth checking them out. High profile player, Boydy. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> but no, so, it, it, I, I enjoyed it. Sad, though, I that someone it. decided to try and ruin someone's fun by putting a fucking DMCA strike on it. Just, yeah. It's always going to be the fucking case, though. So, but I mean, he can prove everything that like you spent enough fucking time on it. You can prove everything he's yeah. used, he owns. So I'm not too worried about it, and he shouldn't be either. I like the unique assets on it as well, the the buildings we've never mm-hmm. seen before that are fully explorable as well, mind you. Mm-hmm. You can get yeah, into was, every room. Yeah, I was room. quite taken aback. Yeah, I was quite taken aback with some of the buildings. I was like, oh, hang on, these are fucking new. Yeah. And there weren't some... Um, as I've seen with stuff on like the Daisy Modders Discord, where buildings like people that the buildings that people make, they're very clean. They're very yeah. They need some know, dirtying. Yeah, Cabello's done a good job with it, or whoever done them, really, really done a fat, like really, really nice job. Yeah. So I gotta give credit where credit is due for that. Definitely. Get on it. Check it out, folks. Um. Okay, uh, we, we showed some love to the dev team before. Um, now to, um, uh, we started the thread in the um, podcast, uh, Discord, mm-hmm. and oh my fucking God, it is massive. Um, <laughs> everything missing in points from uh, point uh, six two in the game. Okay. Holy crap, there was a lot of stuff. Oh god, yeah. I actually yeah. haven't seen this thread yet. Where is this? Uh, Give me a sec. Channel? Let me just find it. Um, please tell me it's still there. Missing items and features. Um, in the uh, community chats, topic discussion, and then a um, a thread of missing items and features. Ah. The one thing I'd love back would be spray paint. Yeah. And I had an idea actually yesterday for spray paint. So tell me if I'm wrong, but could you in the alpha versions of the game spray paint play carriers? No, I don't think you could. So what about this? Add it so you could spray paint play carriers, but obviously the paint isn't going to stick very well to the fabric because it's kind of, well, it's fabric, you know. So why not have it so the. The paint, like say, you put black paint on the tan vest or something like that. It's kind of blotchy. It's got like spots of where the paint didn't stick to the vest, for example. You know, so it doesn't look like a pristine black vest when you paint it, but it looks a bit more rough. You know, and it's made by someone who doesn't really know how to paint or doesn't know what they're doing. I think it'd be a cool idea. Same for green and all these other colors as well. But there were hmm. so many things, so many things. You know, I started it off um, the chainsaw SKS stripper clip. And we've got the, the org, which is back now, bipods, um, the mesh barrier, the red nine, functional vehicles, <laughs> the passenger truck, um, the bus, the field shovel, the rack. Uh, bicycles have never been in the game. Um, no. nope. uh, the M249 was in the files, but wasn't in the game. The Longhorn, um, the Derringer, the cattle prod, 
The stun baton. Crossbow, improvised bow, broken arms, um, the P1, the rack, the longhorn derringer, pistol grip shoddy, red nine, the trumpet, crossbow, improvised bow, spear, pointy stick that stabs. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, we, there was even, there's even a lot of features that we're still missing, being able to catch rainwater, for example. Um, yeah. Mushrooms and berries, which you used to use for dyeing. Um, even the uh, the dying farm feature is is another feature that's missing from the game. Um, pen and paper, being able to write and leave a note, um, you know that that's one that I miss. I don't understand why that's not back. Makes me nostalgic to think about all those things that yeah. I remind me now, back in the day. Yeah, leather clothes, Especially the bus and the the truck with the the seats on the back. I used yeah. to find a yeah. bus, make it drivable, and pick up freshies yep. on the coast, and just drive them to the west and leave them there yeah. just to be, and go away. The old party bus. Every, everyone's uh, got memories of the old party bus back in the days, and um, just running along the coast, and party bus comes along, and it's full of people, and just madness yeah. in, sho in shoes. But, you know, at the same time, it's... Um, a lot of stuff that could be added um, in the near future, uh, but it, it's you do wonder why some of these things aren't ragdoll animation. Yeah, that was one I saw in a comment. Yeah. Uh, volumetric Ragdoll clouds. Nice. It, 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 would, it would be remiss of me not to mention volumetric clouds for Dance of Jesus. Clouds. Drowning. Yeah, okay, there's so. another one. Drowning in the water. Remember you used yeah, to be the able drowning to, one. Yeah. Yeah. You used to be able to kill yeah. yourself on yeah. the coast by laying down in the water. Yeah, that's probably why they got rid of that feature, I'd assume. <laughs> because no precious were killing each other. Now, I mean, now, killing themselves. Spud's got a point there with the pen and paper. I would imagine would be due to no one moderating vanilla. Can you imagine the toxic notes that would be left around the place? Of course. Yeah. But at the same time, why do they allow voice chat then? No, the the ability to write messages on notes was just fucking amazing. I used to, when I find a base in the middle of the forest, I used to leave a note, just say, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Something like yeah. that. <laughs> or, or just uh, crazy messages that are in the airfield so people can pick them up and have story to tell because of it. I think it's really a missing feature. It is really a missing feature. And like I said, you know, who moderates voice chats, bud? Um, why, why remove a feature because of the, the small percentage of people that are going to do the fucking bullshit? They just need to put in a, um, uh, a function that you can... Uh, they need to improve the reporting mechanisms within the game, lad, uh, whether it be reporting a potential hacker or if someone places something that's offensive um, with a note, mm. um, you know, leave a thing that you can report the... Um, uh, the note that's been left, and it generates a, you know, you know, maybe an auto um, feedback tracker thing, and that person gets banned from the game if they type something fucking racist or fucking sexist yeah. or whatever. And See, I'm that's, sure they have enough for that. Yeah, there's there's a, there's a lot of mechanics which have been removed during alpha, um, or when point six two ten and point six three and beyond. And there there's there's Obviously, there is a valid reason for some some of the stuff not coming back, which we know in the past, you know, with stuff like the balls and stuff like that, it was because the team doesn't have an animator. Now they do, and the org is back. So we can expect more stuff like balls and mm. strip clips and whatnot to come back. <clears throat> but there's also, they haven't probably, I would imagine, to, de to de de develop a way where they can reintroduce it because obviously they can't just put the core from the old versions of the game into the new one. There'll be some blockages because now it's like it's quite a bit of infusion, whereas before it wasn't. Um, so there'll be some stuff that would have worked in the old engine that doesn't work now. So mm. it's, it's having to go about it. It's like Burst Fire before the FAMAS was introduced. No matter what you tried to do, you could not get Burst Fire to fucking work to save your life. It was like the the... the the end goal of like firearms modding to create burst fire mode and then vanilla came out of it and now it's like oh my fucking god and it's very very nice to use 
And it's, 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 it's great that all these mods are being made um, that people are talking about in chat. Um, you know, Rag Tyson's got a bus with um, DDU. Mm. I've seen bus mods before as well. Um, but that doesn't help console. Um, no. you know, the, the simple little basic features of the game that we lost when they moved to the Infusion engine. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's it. And we can expect to see, at least I, I, w I would suspect, I would like to see that content coming back. It'll be really nice. It, how would I say it? It's like, for the PC players, it's getting old content back. But for console players, it's getting new content full stop. It's like we're getting to the point now where it's like, uh, you know, the PC like the PC community is like, oh my god, we've got the fucking OGs back. And then you've got the console folks is like, oh, we've got a brand new gun. And there's a difference there. It's like, we have something back. We've got something new. And it's like, oh, shit. Okay, we're at that point now <laughs> in the game's life. So... But the team's getting better. Uh, they're getting more funding. I mean, however, there was job listings earlier this year, and we can only assume that, judging by how development's been lately, those positions are getting filled. Uh, so yeah. I would like to think that this, the old stuff is going to come back within the next couple of updates. When We're not going to know, obviously. Um, 1.16 is... Pff, no idea when the fuck that'll come out. I'm predicting February, March time. Um, Part 116? Uh, yeah, probably, yeah. I mean, 1.13 to 15 is come out within the space of... A month, what? I think. Three or four? Oh, well, yeah, sorry. Four or five what? months? Something like From that? 13 to 15. Yeah, yeah. 1.6 will be the best update ever. That is when we'll get your volumetric clouds back. Jesus. I would and love... And those. I, I would love, sort of, Dancer Jesus is uh, hinting at it, I would love for them to do a um, a patch, um, you know, 1.16, 1.17, um, where they just do a mass drop of so many things that we had um, pre-0.62. Um, mm -hmm. and just blow the community's mind with chainsaws back and bows back and just all of these really cool features. Yeah, and, and, then, and then they expand on it, and you can use a chainsaw for base rating, um, um, yeah, a wooden wall base. Um, yeah, and expand, yeah, just that, that would be fucking amazing. It would be really, really fucking cool. It... <clears throat> I mean, we'll we'll touch on it more as the year comes to a close. But you know, with one at least one more year of confirmed development, I can't wait hmm. to see what they bring. Even if they end up not bringing in all of the old content, um, and just instead of replacing it with something more fresh and brand new, like a more better iteration of like old piece yeah. of content, I okay. I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't hmm. mind that at all. Um. But we'll just have to see what happens. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, um, with the development team, you know, they get a lot of shit every single fucking day and people take the piss out of them all the time. And I do feel sorry for them because I know there's a lot for them to do. But if there's one thing that I want them to do when it comes down to it is bring back my fucking Red Nine. <laughs> and the rack. Bring it the fucking back. Nice. No, fuck the rack. I want me Red Do Nine. Rack. Well, it'll have insane fire rate, the rack, so it'll be like a minigun. Bring I back don't... the rack! <laughs> Trumpet. Trum oh, yeah, and the trumpet. It's, a, it's a rite of passage to get killed or, or get a kill with the trumpet. You can't, it, say, it you can't say you're Daisy until you've got a kill with a trumpet. A pump action 22. <laughs> oh, and the red knight. Uh, sorry, and the derringer. And the derringer as well. That's another one. Uh, it's a rite of passage to get a kill with the pink derringer. What about if they added the Derringer yeah. back, but it was 357, they're just in telling you. Yeah. It <laughs> shows absolute one-tap people. Funny. That would be good. Um, what else have we got? It's Avogadro, eh? Realism versus balance. We sort of touched on this um, before. Mm. Um, 
but it was a comment on um, the video, um, one of the videos I put out. My, uh, oh, yeah. <clears throat> so it was on the uh, Daisy podcast with Foxtrot, um, and MIDI came back. I think you're looking into realism too much. Good video games are built on balance, um, not realism. We're playing a game about zombies, man. This is not realistic. That's a fair point, is what I replied. But what separates DayZ from other games is the realism. Most descend into arcade-style gameplay. DayZ and Armour have maintained that realism, which is what makes them unique. That's my take on the situation. Mm. What do you guys think of that? I agree on the thing. I mean, most of the time when I want to play the survival game, I kind of annoyed about how not arcade arcade it is and not realistic as Daisy. I mean I'm used to Daisy. I like how Daisy the game is like uh, they didn't work properly now. So I'm really into that idea of realism and details of the game. Even if there is zombie which is not it's not actually zombies. It's yeah. uh, infected. So we can say in a way since they're not dead that's realistic enough. Mm. I'm I, despite me using the term realism and realistic, I prefer authenticity um, when it comes down to it. Um, if an experience is authentic enough, then I'm fine with it uh, when it comes down to it. And just like Dimitri said, and everybody who actually plays the game regularly enough knows, it's not fucking zombies, it's infected. And it's it's like Dante Jesus says, it's not a valid argument. Just because there's zombies in the game, it's not it's not you know what it's it's not realistic. It's it's just a it's just a bullshit argument you like uh, you like to make because you you think you're smart, but you're actually fucking not. Um, whereas Daisy has implemented some questionable things that do give off an arcadey experience, like how we got with weapons from point six three and onwards. It's um. It's still authentic, and, and it's more authentic now with the increased rate of fire that best represents the real-life firearms, which is something I do in my weapons. I always research the weapons. Uh, how, I even go down to the fucking detail of like the, how they're made, like the materials, how they're made, just to get the textures right and shit like that, um, to get that authentic feel. But... There's obviously there's a there's a fucking reason DayZ is popular, and we already know that once Armor Four comes out, somebody's going to make a DayZ mod for it with the yeah. full infusion engine. I mean, I've been messing around with Workbench, and they've got material selections for PBR physical based rendering, which obviously does not work with DayZ. So that that's going to be really fucking lovely to work with. Um, but I don't know. It's I don't know. It's just um He did ex he did uh, expand on it and I wanted to show this as well so people don't think he was just um you know one of those um realism. I I I do agree that a game whereas it requires if like Daisy, it requires a certain level of authenticity or realism or whatever, it does need that gameplay balance because at the end of the day it is a video game, and you're not going to expect like a, the average Joe to to learn every single element of one particular thing. You need that balance. Um, it's why I think, like I said, going back to the M4, um, the recoil needs to be upped because it's it's a gameplay balance thing. Um, it might detract from the realism or authenticity of it, but you need to balance that with. The, the game itself and that goes with everything it's like you know how long it takes to to bandage yourself or how long it takes to cut up a piece of clothing just all of these little things that add up requires that balance and if you do the balance poorly it shows and your player base gets fucking pissed uh, especially if certain things are balanced too much like overbalanced so it's like something's like just really op or something where it needs a lot of love and it just doesn't get it like base building you know it's not balanced correctly and whereas you know realistically you know 
ever. It's it's hard to describe. I can't I can't formulate my full thoughts on it because my brain's not fucking working properly right now. <laughs> I haven't had enough iron brew. That's what it is. I haven't had enough iron brew. Look at that. I barely even reached the fucking label. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what did you think, thoughts? Dimitri? Yeah, I agree on the thing. It's uh, to me, this is realistic and authentic. And as I agree with Laz and everything he said, it's it's a game with a lot of details. And when you combine them, it makes the game authentic enough and balanced. And at the end, that's a pretty good game. That's why we are all here, I suppose. And come, that seems more complex in some way, but still, we're still in Daisy. So it meant something. There is something behind it. I can't say more. I mean, I'm really since uh, 2016. I played the game, never stopped. So can't go elsewhere. I tried. I'm stuck. Yeah. What about Same. you, Marks? Yeah, it, it is the most realistic survival game out there. Um, like I've tried to play Scum. Can't. I just can't grasp it. It's the same. Like when. You look at all these other uh, survival games that come out, like Dead Matter or um, what's that other one that I can't think of that also begins with Dead? Dead Side. Um, Dead Side, yeah, and all that stuff. It's like, they all kind of, everyone's like, oh, Daisy Killer. And it's like, it's <laughs> like a really arcadey kind of cartoonish version nearly of Daisy in a way, isn't it? Like, it just doesn't feel gritty or realistic in a way. So it's nice that Daisy does focus on realism, but you have to have a good balance of both at the same time. Yeah. Because you don't want to be living your real life in a game. Because then no. there's no escape. And that pardon me, and that and that's it, going back to the balance thing. You know, we'll play we'll play Daisy for many elements and one of it is just to have fun. It isn't an escape. But if you try and make a video game way too much real life you detract you, you detract something from it that makes it more enjoyable it's like you know growing up like you always say oh it's really like it'd be so cool if we had a game where it'd be like exactly like planet earth or something like that where you could go everywhere it's like no it really fucking wouldn't be it'd be it's just no let's not fucking do that we got that with, micro well, we got that with microsoft flight simulator and that's fun, but I'm not going to be walking to fucking Asda to buy a bottle of Iron Brew in a video game, am I? I'm going to do it for real life. You know, so... And you imagine, lad, you finish to work in real life, then you go to your game and you work in your second job. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what the fuck? No, thank you. No, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> there, there does need to be that mix of realism um, um, versus, you know, gameplay balance and, um, and that, but... <laughs> Um, Daisy's mm. Edge, I think, is that it does uh, tip more towards realism. Um, mm. Yeah. Um, I found this quite interesting. I had no idea this was a real location. Me neither. Most of the, most of the buildings in Daisy are real buildings. Yeah. You just have to know where to look. Yeah. I That's would pretty... love to go to this place. Yeah, same. Knowing what happened there, I mean, in all the stories we had. Yeah, it's definitely um, cool. Can you imagine just going there in that bridge and just say, hey, <laughs> with all the folks around? Yeah. <laughs> Sad, sadly, you cut hey, out then. We didn't hear what you, would, uh, uh, what you would say on the bridge. I mean, on the bridge, let's say you're with your friends of Daisy and there's also other Say, hey, can you imagine the time I headshot someone there? Yo, bro, I'm I'm friendly, bro. I'm friendly. <laughs> you just hit. You just like you separate from the group, and all you hear is a distant voice echoing through yeah. the halls. I'm friendly, bro. Yeah, that would be fun. And it's so beautiful, absolutely beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we should talk. We should buy that building and turn it into the Daisy Podcast headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice idea. Yeah. Let's start fundraising. You just need a small loan of five million euros. Yeah. Oh, I reckon it'd be more than that. 
probably yeah oh they have their own currency maybe it's it's less maybe yeah with the conversion rate look how it's gorgeous inside damn i like how it's actually a palace and in game it's a fucking prison yeah <laughs> Like that's 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 cool. I like that. And that link that um Sour Crowd just shared. Mm. Yeah, I yeah. saw this on Reddit a while ago. It was super cool. See, it's... they never these invented places. anything. They just make their environment into mm -hmm. Daisy, and that's something I really like. To to just. Took, took a car, drive, drove, and then say, oh, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's put that in the game. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if you like this sort of stuff, you need to go back and watch the um, podcast with Matt Lightfoot, um, one of the guys who was involved in the original creation of DayZ Standalone. Um, and, yeah, it, it's amazing um, the stories he had to tell. I think that's episode 30-something okay. or other um, with Matt Lightfoot. Absolutely amazing. Mm. And, yeah, Tope Rex got a video. Barely Infected's got a video of them visiting um, the real Cherneris and going to some of these locations. And just imagine if someone ever um, did a tour, mm. um, yeah, a guided tour, yeah, someone like a Matt Lightfoot, um, and just took you around and told you all the history. Oh, man, I'd be on that fucking, yeah. Yeah, I really would like that. That would be fucking amazing. Yeah. Some kind of trip. Let's organize that. Mate, I legit, I would. And I've said it go. before and I'll say it again. I would love to see, like, uh, I wouldn't say an expedition, but like a, a pilgrimage or something like that to go to, to, go to these places and for the, the, the podcast team to somehow get invited to the fucking offices in Prague and meet the actual development team and shit like that. That would be fucking the highlight of everything <laughs> i know that i know there's cool. people in the community um i can't remember who i think it was down to jesus he said that he wanted to go there uh like to these irl places and i, I so fucking would i really would there's a there's a french streamer that went to the bohemia office of daisy i think Bibix. a couple of years ago yeah Bibix, yeah he went there and they just let him in and <laughs> coffee and thing and just explain to him the dev stuff so it was just yep. fucking amazing so let's just go and knock at the end it seems to work <laughs> hello i'm led from the dz podcast can i come in ten of no. us show up at their door i wasn't aware scotty had said <laughs> that publicly that. doj so that's interesting um scotty apparently said on his stream that this might happen during spring of 2022 so, oh. uh. mm, okay. <laughs> now, something um, I do want to cover, um, kind of sad, um, but PR83 uh, SimFX um, replied to a post um, that DayZ had made advising um, his friend that he had met in DayZ has passed away. He logged out to go out in his car, and that night his partner messaged us that he had died in an accident. Any help anyone can give his family will be greatly appreciated. Um, rest in peace, uh, Chris. And that's a photo of him there and a link to a GoFundMe, mm -hmm. um, which I will share as well. Um, Please do. We did donate uh, 20, uh, 20 pounds um, as the podcast community. Um, I would love to have done more, but you know, maybe down the line um, we can. Uh, but if you've got a few bucks there, um, a guy that young, you just know that you know um, finances are going to be hard. Um, on the family, um, you know, losing one of the primary yeah. income earners. It's it's just, I, I replied to um, Fly as well, and I said, I, I can't even begin to comprehend that. You know, one one minute you're talking to a guy, um, and a few hours later he's dead. Um, yeah. And there's, you know, I'm getting goosebumps now just thinking about it. Um, Fucking tragic. Didn't know the guy, don't, never spoken to him in my life, but, you know, he's part of the DayZ family. Um, and if anyone can, please, you know, maybe, even if it's only a fiver, um, 10 quid, whatever, one quid, fucking yeah, every dollar will count. Um, uh, it's just, it's fucking tragic. It's, it's really fucking mm -hmm. tragic. And, that, and that's it. It's like, like you said, like, we might not... Like if something like this happens, we might have never ever heard of the person before. Um, 
ever. But once we catch wind of it, if something like this has happened, we are going to raise awareness of it because they are part of the community. And we might shit on each other a lot. We might give each other crap and that. But at the end of the day, we're all one big family. And, you know, if God forbid anything would happen to anyone, we'd be right there to support them as much as we can. So even if you just spread the link around, you just raise awareness um, for this person's family, do it. You know, there's 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 no harm in just resharing a link. But if you no. can donate to the family to to just help out, even if it's a couple of quid, just something like that. And know, and I'm, I'm going to do it again. This is the sort of stuff that the big guys need to be sharing on their Twitter accounts and that as well. Um, raising awareness. It doesn't cost you a fucking cent. Um, you know, even if you don't donate yourself, just retweet it. Just share it. So that those like Michael um, in chat who has said he's going to donate right after the podcast, God bless you, Michael, uh, for doing that. Um, so so, to, so to, it just raises awareness. It doesn't cost you a thing. It's not – no one's going to judge you, think badly of you. Um, and it, you know, it, it'll help you sleep a bit easier at night knowing you did what you could um, to help to help out a family. Um, yeah, he's a dad. He's, his partner's pregnant. Um, again, with another child on the way. It's it's just it's fucking sad. It is. It's, <coughs> yeah, just just share it. Just share it if you if you can't even if you can't donate, just retweet it, share it, post it in discords wherever you can. Um, do something to help out a family that really needs um, a lot of love. You know, especially coming up to Christmas. What a fucking terrible time yeah, to lose someone as well. Horrible. Yeah. It's fucking horrible. Yeah, it's some really nice donations there. Uh, 270 pounds. Um, that's what probably 500 odd US dollars. Well, close to three, well, 400, something like that. But mm. it's just like the amount of support, even now, is really great. But yep. every little helps. Every little helps, guys. Share some of that love because some people in the world need it. Mm hmm. Rest in peace, Chris. Rest in peace. You seemed like you made a bit of an impact on um, the people who knew you, mate, um, enough so that they shared um, this out there. So, yeah, very sad. And apparently it wasn't even his fault either. Um, he was hit by an oncoming car, um, which makes it even more tragic. Probably just ducking down the shop to grab a bottle of milk or something like that, and, yeah. It's fucked. Crazy how... Everything can change in a split second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Life is short. Try to always um, make sure you uh, leave as good of an impact on the world around you as you possibly can. Michael's saying, I lost my wife to cancer. I couldn't have made it without the help of uh, family, friends and strangers. We all got to pay it forward. Exactly. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. That's what I'm trying to do with the community around here. Um, focus on as much positivity as possible. Um, do things to help people um, that we can. And yeah. Um, hopefully that gets me um, uh, a few concessions for some of the shitty things I did as a younger guy uh, when I was younger. So, yeah. Um. <clears throat> Got to do it again. Dr. Strange Love. Free emote <laughs> of the month. This. I can love this one. <coughs> and love I Dr. Love Strange Love. Class. He's... I can't wait to tell you guys more about the side project that I've got uh, oh. that we're going to be working on next year. I'm really fucking excited for it. Um, and it, if it works out the way that it could, it's going to mean we're going to be able to do a lot more uh, for the community that's around the show as well um, in the way of giveaways and stuff like that. But it's pretty fucking cool. It's pretty fucking cool. I can't fucking wait. You keep you keep talking about keep it. You keep teasing, teasing us. Yeah. yeah, like like like. Let's just put let's just put this in a perspective, guys. Right? For anybody who doesn't know, in 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 our chats in our in our in our streams right now, Boydie is not saying a fucking thing to Mark and I at all. We have no idea what it is, and he's not telling us. So. No. Just stop being a teasing little shit. Just fucking tell us. <laughs> Which I already know what he's going to say is going to be a straight up fucking no. No, we should do that. We should sue him for the answer. <laughs> sue him? What the fucking sue him for? <laughs> Sounds like a new <laughs> 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 
It's it's gonna be awesome. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. Um, I whatever it is, I can't fucking wait. I, I really cannot wait. But uh, I'm I'm excited. I, I am excited. Um, I'm always trying to think of ways. I just retweeted that as well, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. So you can find um, that there. Uh, but um, I also got permission to use the Daisy logo for that other surprise um, um, present um, or gear, uh, prize for the uh, Christmas show as well. Um, so, again, the guys know nothing about what that is as well. Um, but I have sent that um, out um, to get made. So hopefully it's um, – they reckon I'll have it by the 19th of November. Uh, probably the week before, the week before the uh, Christmas podcast, I'll reveal what it is. Um, I'll be able to hold it in my hands and show you guys um, the Christmas show is looking good. Um, I'm, I'm very, very excited for it. Very, very mm -hmm. excited. Also, speaking about the Daisy logo and giving them permission, for every, anybody who doesn't know, I've recently been able to get a new phone. Huzzah, thank God for that. To replace, you know, this fucking piece of shit, right? So that can fuck off. So I got a new phone, and they, oh my God. Oh, no, you got it up on Stop the screen. Stop being a blurry twat. Yes. It gave me permission to use the Daisy logo. And that is my artwork. And do you know how fucking surreal it is when you make artwork like last year or the year before when you were bored and now it's in, on a phone case? It's like, it's so fucking cool. <laughs> Just reach out to them. But, if you want to make something for yourself um, or like I'm doing as a gift for the um, community, just reach out to them. They're really, really cool like that. We shit on BI mm -hmm. from time to time, but in other aspects, they're really fucking cool. Um, provided you're not monetizing it. I know there was someone who had something taken down from the Etsy store this week, uh, mm -hmm. but they had the Daisy logo in there. And it is their copyright. They have to protect their copyright uh, as Literally, much as yeah. they possibly can. Uh, but, yeah. Just ask. That's all I've done. Is that I, just, I just sent them a, a DM on Twitter. I was just like, hey, can I use this for X, Y, Z? Um, they said, yep, as long as you don't... Um, you know, as long as it's for, for personal private use, which obviously it is. Um, but, yeah, you want that shit? Well, go on their fucking merch store, dude. On yeah. their Bohemian web. Yep. Do it. That's where I got the map, up. which is a very... That's where it's got a map and it's blurry mess right now, but it's where you get all sorts of shit. They, need, cool. they need to do more merch. They really do need to do more merch on that oh, site. God, yes, definitely. Holy shit, they definitely fucking do. Yeah, I hugely agree there. <laughs> it's pretty fucking lackluster. Yeah, they, yeah, they still, still sell the shirts. Them. They don't sell the white one anymore. I think they've stopped making the white shirt. Um, but mm -hmm. if you give me a sec... Um... I want a Daisy hoodie so badly. I'm still waiting yeah. for Scotty to send mine. <laughs> Twat. <laughs> I'm only joking, Scotty, if you're watching. I'm only joking. There's, there's no rush. <laughs> But yeah, dude, they, they they still sell they still sell a bunch of stuff, um, but it is pretty lackluster. It would be really cool if they do make more uh, kind of different like match in the future. Like right now, they've got the two maps. Um, my only complaint with the map is it's a bit small. I would have expected it to be a bit bigger, but <laughs> no, answer Jesus, shut up. <laughs> I got a hoodie and I'm too fat to fit in it, so that made me sad. Mm. My son's got it. Chuckles says, I want a Daisy hoodie that looks badly damaged. Mate, you know, the fucking, that would be so cool. Like, the badly damaged texture over it, that would be mm. so nice. Distressed. Distressed hoodie. Mm. But yeah, so they've got a few things for sale. The shirts are there, $14.99. I've given away quite a few in the past. Um... As prizes, and I'm probably going to try and do some for um, uh, this giveaway as well. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, check it out. I I can't fucking wait. It's going to be really cool, really really cool. Mm -hmm. But like I said, guys, like if you want your own kind of like DayZ match or something like that, then go to the Bohemia store. Um, but if you want something personalised, just there's no harm in asking. The West that can say is no. Yep. Yep, great philosophy to live by. Dimitri, thank you so, so much for coming on today, buddy. Well, thank you to accept me, to invite me. That was really great. 
No, we, we, we love shining the spotlight on um, the, 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 the people that we call the true heroes behind the scene, mate. The modders, um, you guys don't get any. Adopt the modder. Hashtag adopt the modder. Um, <laughs> check out his Patreon. Uh, we support it uh, here on the podcast. Um, but, you know, the more people in there, because um, we have things like uh, there's a lot of costs that go into creating the mods, particularly when there's items and things like that, you know, buying models and or getting someone to create a 3D model for you or um, and some of that stuff's not cheap. It's not. Yeah. No. So anything you can do to support the uh, the modding community behind the scenes, folks, consider doing it. Consider doing it. Um, yeah. Lad, Marks, thank you so, so much once again. Great as always. Yeah, Good been... episode. Um, yes, Arch- Arch- sorry, Arch- I was a little bit late. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's coming out of your pay, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Not just been docked room. 70 grand for being that late. Archie did send his apologies. Um, he was out of town at the moment. Um, he promises he will mm. be back next week. Um, so it'll be good to finally get him uh, back on the show. Um, next week, next week's guest, folks, Chris FPS. Oh shit! Yeah, That's he's been be doing good. a bit of stuff, um, uh, content creation wise, and that as well. So, yeah, quite excited to get him on. It's been a while since we've had a content creator on. If I'm right. Um, you have me on every week. What are you on about? Uh, <laughs> ah, your content uh, shit. Uh, <laughs> I know. I'm joking. Fucking awful. New, the, the, new the video dropping one. on Monday as well, Marks. <clears throat> That'll be one tonight, Sunday, and Monday. Mm. Pumping them out, pumping them out, mate. Yep. Highlight tonight. Uh, I'm gonna do sure a video on content. Sunday about all the new fire rate changes and recall changes, and then I have a gameplay video on Monday. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's going to be exciting. Can't wait to see it. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Watch it, you guys. And we will see you all next week um, with Chris FPS on the show. Um, and yeah, looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sounds it's going to be great. Thank you again, Dimitri, for coming on, bud. It's been nice actually seeing your luscious face. I like your little Starship Trooper. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, your uh, Stormtrooper cushion there, mate. Yeah, thank you. I like it as well. Like Buy it today, actually. Buy it today. Ah, nice. Oh, nice. There you go. <laughs> Keep up the good work, mate. You're doing um, some uh, interesting stuff there uh, with some of your mods and that. And um, yeah, jump on and support him on the Patreon or donate to him via PayPal, folks. Uh, links are in the description of his mods. Um, and I'll have links in the description of the video as well. Uh, the date for the Christmas show is 18th of December, a week before Christmas. Then we're taking a few weeks off and we'll be back early in the new year. Sounds like a plan. All the best, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Ciao for now. See you next week, guys. Bye.